is so stupid it's positively brilliant. The brilliant Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and today's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Showtime and the critically acclaimed series The Shy. I missed The Shy this week, man. I got to catch up, man. Uh, it's the heart and soul of Chicago's South Side. Uh, if you don't know anything about the heart and soul of Chicago's South Side, just know that it lies in its community, and that's what The Shy shows you, okay? But when your world is a daily struggle just to get by, can you rise up and stand tall to realize a better tomorrow? Huh? What you know about Ronnie and Brandon and Emmett and Kevin, huh? What you know about them confronting the Tough choices that will shape their futures in the shy. Okay, created and executive produced by Emmy Award winner Lena Waif and Academy Award winner Common. Don't miss the shy. New episode Sunday at 10 p.m. only on Showtime. To try a free month of Showtime, go to Showtime.com and enter the code IDIOTS. This offer is for the first time subscribers only and expires May 6, 2019. Now let's start the show. <clears throat> um, make sure you go out there and grab Shook One. Anxiety playing tricks on me. I feel like I got more church announcements, but I can't even remember them. Make sure you grab tickets to the Matador Tour. There you go. Make sure you get them, theandrewschultz.com. And we got a live show coming out. Are we not announcing that shit? How are we? Well, we don't have anything booked yet, yet, but we need to, we'll discuss that. But oh, okay. Well, we'll yeah, we need to We need to talk about the live show, but that would be definitely cool to do again. But make sure you check out the Matador Tour. I'll be in uh, Austin, Texas for the Moon Tower Comedy Festival this weekend, and Dallas next weekend, and then uh, Nashville for one night only, uh, a couple weekends after that, and the rest of the, uh, the tour, go check it out right now. Tickets are moving. We added another show to San Francisco. Uh, Toronto's almost sold out. I think we got like 20 tickets left for that. That's crazy, man. Thank you, Toronto. And just keep on um, getting those, man. Because when I come in the city and it's sold out and then you guys are in the DMs like, like, yo, how do we get a ticket? How do we get a ticket? You, This is how you get a ticket. You go right now. TheAndrewSouls.com. Get that ticket. Even beautiful women. What if it's beautiful women offering you fellatio for a ticket? How does that work? You still do that nowadays? Or that <sighs> Me Two Times Up killed that? No, and, and I've never been affected by Me Two Times Up. Okay. I don't believe that. All right. okay. <laughs> Listen, no, fellatio is good. What what, what, what they going to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's consensual. I mean, yeah. I I did, I, sex kill, you know, is killed by that Me Two Fair Times Fair trade up. market, baby. You gave me head. For tickets. Fair trade market. You asked me. You gave me head to give me head. Beauty of America. I just happen to ask you if you want to come to the show afterwards. Those are two totally different interactions. But what if she Completely. says? Completely. What if she or he? Yeah. Says, just to be fair. Of course. She of course. or he says to you. Yeah. Hey, I'll give you fellatio for some tickets to the Matador show. I would say. I would say. No, I'd say what? no. What? It's fair trade. No, no, I would say no. I'd say if you want to give me head to give me head, then that's fine. Gotcha. Right? And then afterwards, whatever happens, happens, but I can't guarantee anything. <laughs> Good way of, of saying if the head is trash, I'm not giving you these tickets, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. The head is trash, you on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great time to segue into Jesus. Now listen. Shout out to my man Jesus. We was having a conversation. We had this conversation ever so often, but seriously, mm -hmm. when is Jesus getting a rebrand? Uh, Easter was Sunday, bro. Yeah, it was I slow. didn't even see Jesus trending. It was slow. But I saw man. them thrones. Yes, yeah, right. Man. Was, Game of Thrones. You know what I'm saying? Game I saw Thrones them thrones, it, bro. Man. People need to. We. I want to discuss this Jesus rebrand, but people really need to get on Game of Thrones because this is the last big cultural event in scripted television. My, my wife watches it a lot. It's the last one. Because now it's streaming culture, you're not going to have, yeah. there'll never be another show this big, because this show carried for eight years, right? Yeah. There'll never be another show this big. It's no appointment viewing no more. Yeah, exactly. And if yeah. and the appointment viewing that there is, it's, it's mostly not a, sports. It's not a cultural moment. But it's yeah, not a yeah. cultural, this is the last one we're watching, so if, even if you, you haven't caught up, right? Just I've watch it. Up. I've never watched. Oh, okay, well, boom. <laughs> well, shit, you haven't caught up. Yeah. So, like, watch a bunch of recap things. You don't even need to know that much for this season. I, people are like, I'm going to be lost. No, you won't. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's dead. There's only a few people left, and their stories are pretty much described from the jump. So it's like, just watch it to be part of it. I'm telling you, it's dope to just meet a stranger and then know that that person is at the exact point in time in a TV series as you. That doesn't exist with streaming. I'm going to watch when it's over. I'm going to be part of the 1%. Fuck that. I'm rebelling. Right. Fuck all you uh, people that love Game of Thrones. You know what I'm saying? I saw the funniest tweet. Somebody so tweeted, good. I really hope Games of Thrones, Game of Thrones kills off all his fans in the final season. <laughs> 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 I don't think Game of Thrones fans are annoying, though. No. What did I say? Game of Thrones. <laughs> Oh, woo! All right, <laughs> all right. But listen, I, I don't find Game of Thrones fans annoying at all. 
because they're everyone. You can't find yeah. everyone annoying. Yeah, and it's, it's literally everyone is watching. It seems like the hype is warranted for for this show. Man, it's so god, dude. It made me totally rethink how I feel about nerds because my whole life I pitied nerds, but these last couple weeks I've been so excited. So these microphones we're talking on didn't make you feel like that. What do you mean? Smartphones, <laughs> apps, what do you video mean? games. They're no. all made by nerds. No, 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 no. Yeah, a lot of shit is made by things, but yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. mean that like I pitied them. You know gotcha, what I mean? Gotcha, like gotcha. what I'm saying is, like I thought that they were nerdy, and I felt bad for them for being into these kind of shows and like into comedy. Comic books oh, and all that you, kind of stuff. You. I've been so fucking excited for the last two weeks. This is what their life has been. Yeah, Star Wars, Star Trek, every Marvel movie. Why the Trust fuck me, have I felt bad for them? I'm dressing up for Avengers Endgame this Thursday. Is it? Think about what's happening yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Are you doing a screening? Do you have one of your screenings for it? They don't do screenings. They didn't give you that shit. Avengers? Yeah. Fuck out of here. Hey, take, take a wrinkle in time. No, take Black Panther. <laughs> we didn't expect this shit. They're not going to do that for the next Black Panther. The first one, oh, yeah, sure. It's going to make a couple hey, hundred million. Do two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do two if you want. You know what I mean? I'm not doing that shit for Avengers. This shit going to make a $3 billion. <laughs> so my point is, like, we felt bad for them and. Now I'm realizing how enjoyable their fucking life is. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They've had yeah. way more fun in their... The last two weeks have been amazing. But they've had way more fun in their lives being nerds yeah. and being into these yeah. kind of comic book scenarios and Game of Thrones, et cetera, than I've had just being into watching the Knicks suck. You know why? Because it's never letting go of that childlike innocence. Boom. You know what I'm saying? It takes you back to that place and you didn't have a yeah. care in the world except for needing a dollar to go buy a motherfucking comic book. The one downfall is that they never let go of their childlike virginity. <laughs> That's the one thing. Nah. Was, what? I think them Game of Thrones parties be popping oh, after the fact, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game yeah, of Thrones yeah, changed yeah, the game, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of hookers in Game of Thrones. fucking after them. That's it. <laughs> it's it's straight Thrones fucking. Parties. They bro. gotta be, right? Bro, Game of Thrones, the whole first seven scenes, is they're just fucking hookers. Yeah, I knew Game of Thrones was popping when Jay-Z bought Beyonce a fake dragon egg. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my boy got a funny joke where he's uh he was in uh, Harlem and he goes this crackhead comes up to him he says I got these dragon eggs and the guy's like what he goes I got these dragon eggs fifty cents uh, fifty cents an egg and he goes what the fuck are you talking about show me and he goes bro those are avocados. <laughs> 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 and, then, and then he goes then he goes wait a minute 50 cents an avocado alright give me them shits wow <laughs> yeah. well, listen here's the thing Game of Thrones is popping you know I know Game of Thrones is popping too Jesus didn't stand a chance nah bro it's Jesus tough. didn't stand a chance bro from the time really Sunday hit first of all I went from 420 yeah everybody being high and shit yeah. all these weed meme weeds yeah, and weed yeah, what yeah. the fuck am I trying to say weed memes weed and all this yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. and then the next day Right into them thrones, baby. Probably. Talked about thrones all day long. Jesus didn't trend once. Yeah. I ain't seen no... I saw like one me, one Jesus me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jesus needs a rebrand, bro. Yeah, what would you do with Jesus? <sighs> well, first of all, you have to make him... Uh, he can't be any race. He has to be neutral. Neutral. How Nothing. do you make someone neutral looking? Uh, plastic. You know what I'm saying? Make his complexion plastic, see-through, clear. Okay, he's clear. You know what I'm saying? That's good. No race, no nothing. Or take away the image, period. Okay. Right? Take away the whole image right. and just give us his work. Now you're talking about Islam, my friend. I don't know. That's We're Islam. talking about God in general. We don't know what God looks like, I'm right? just saying, that's Islam. There yeah, are no yeah. images of the prophet. Yeah, take him away. Yeah. Just take, yeah, yeah. The, take that away, period, yeah. and just tell us what he did. You know what I'm right. saying? He walked on water, right. yeah, yeah. turned blood, uh, <laughs> turned water into wine. You didn't pay no you know attention in your Muslim <laughs> classes, <laughs> bro. I <laughs> 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 forgot all about a lot of those religions. Even Joe, yeah, it's okay, I get it. All right. Take, take turns water into wine, you know what I'm right. saying? Fed all of these people with only a loaf of bread and some fish. Like, yeah. just show us what he did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe the shit he did like isn't maybe ain't fire no more yeah Fucking, like do, uh, what's the magician name <laughs> David Blaine David Blaine he does all that shit yeah. bro yo David Blaine <laughs> David Blaine killed Jesus bro. yo we gotta make David, David Blaine, Blaine disappear on water. bro when I thought David Blaine walked on water I said holy shit we Dog. might have to rethink this Jesus thing what if David Blaine's greatest magic trick was making Jesus disappear whoa son <laughs> Wow. I'm serious, man. <laughs> Bro. I'm, listen. That's fucked up. But David Blaine, we, he really did all those shit because back in the day, that was popping, right? Yeah. Back in the day, you could turn water into wine. You were yeah. the man. You could walk on water. You're the man, right? But now we got boats. We don't need to walk on water. If we you just, could feed 5,000 people, you FEMA. 
You FEMA? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're yeah, not yeah. even that good at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can only get to about 25. Yeah, they can get, get you a cool 2,500. <laughs> Puerto Rico's still waiting for batteries. Well, on. No, seriously, man. You no, got some double A? I'm serious, bro. Like, seriously. We got to re really, really, maybe that's Whoa, what it is. We need to give him new shit that resonates wow. to the kids today. What would Jesus wow. do if he came back today? Unlimited phone battery. Can Yo, you no 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 unlimited? Can, can he verify you and you got one follower? <laughs> can he get somebody with one follower a check? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> bro, 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 bro. Can he open Chick Fil A on Sunday? <laughs> I just got heart palpitations. Got now heart we're talking some modern day miracles, man. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> If Jesus opens Chick Fil A on Sunday, we ain't even watching Game of Thrones. This Game of Thrones is over, bro. If Jesus comes back, no, and opens that would Chick-fil-A be a, by the way, Sunday. that would be the ultimate miracle. Come back on a Sunday at nine o'clock. Show up at a Chick Fil A. No, no, forget the Chick Fil A. Oh. You, Jesus. Come back on a Sunday at 9 okay. and see if you can take the attention from Game of Thrones. Will every trending topic be about you? Will people turn on the breaking news on other channels to see the return of Christ? Or will they stick to episode 3 or 4 of Game of Thrones? Woo! I'm not going to lie. Jesus is going to be here Monday. Let's go around the room. <laughs> He's going to be here Monday. We Let's can, go around the room. Taylor, oh, you, you watch Game of Thrones? Come here. Jesus I'm not a fanatic though. So this a Jesus is- fanatic or Game of Thrones? Um Jesus, hey, Jesus, hey, Jesus, hey. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey. Jesus, hey. Jesus, Jesus had nine on Sunday or Game of Thrones. Oh my God. What is man? <laughs> Jesus need a rebrand, bro. Because Jesus need a rebrand. God. <laughs> Jesus need a rebrand, pulls bro. up, right? He doesn't Jesus open up. Like, how's wow. Pull he pulls up. up. He's got the he's got the 12 piece, whatever, okay. from from Chick-fil-A. He got a soda. And a drink, okay? See, you can't do that. He got the sauce put in. Like she don't like Chick Fil A. I like Chick Fil A. The fact, <laughs> the fact that Jesus like has to come back with Chick Fil A. The <laughs> fact that Jesus has to come back with Chick Fil A. She's like, I don't really like Chick Fil A. Jesus has wow. to come with food in order for you to accept yo, Jesus. Yo, if you want, water and wine. what do you mean? It's a wait, party. Wait. Listen, Game wait, of wait for is it. On. Wait for it. If I'm wait. Jesus, you know what I do? I come back Saturday and I leak the Game of Thrones up. Oh. So if you really want Oh y'all was stepping on my day <laughs> By the way we do this to Jesus year round It's not just Easter It's Christmas All these holidays that Jesus is supposed to headline That bunny fucked up Jesus bro Because <laughs> The bunny that lays fucking eggs Think about that Bunnies don't, don't lay no know. fucking eggs What do you mean they don't lay eggs Bunnies don't lay eggs. Wait a minute. They do. Yo, son. <laughs> that shit just dawned on me, son. Yo, yo, tell me. Yo, marketing is a motherfucker, Tell bro. me Jesus ain't the greatest if he made a bunny lay <laughs> eggs. Like, that's, fuck water to wine. Nah, he nah. turned a bunny into a chicken. Nah, they'd have to be chocolate eggs. Say what? They'd have to be chocolate eggs. Why everything gotta be black with you, bro? <laughs> what the fuck, man? Can't we just be people? I gave you see through Jesus. <laughs> Can't we just be people, Charlemagne? Can't we just come together on this day as humans? Instead of the Cadbury bunny, it's the Blackberry bunny. <laughs> You know what they say, the black and the berry, the sweet and the juice. <laughs> the black and the bunny, the sweet and the juice. No, all jokes aside, it's really fucked up that Jesus can't outshine Game of Thrones, bro. Seriously, man. What era do we live in? Jesus has been here a while, man. You know, and we know his story. You know, it, this is, we're still ending, we're still figuring out the end. This is the Last Supper, bro. This is the last supper for yeah. Game of Thrones, dude. We gotta yeah, take this yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw we had uh what's the guy? Brandon Dixon. Brandon Dixon was on Breakfast Club. And he had a you know, he played Judas in Jesus Christ Superstar. Remember oh, I the, saw I saw the video you posted. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had a case for Judas, bro. Okay, what was his argument? Can we play the clip? I don't want to like basically he was just saying that. Judas was just a person to him. You know what I'm saying? He don't look at Judas as good. He don't look at Judas as bad. Right. And he was saying, you know, Judas was an apostle as well. So both of them, both Jesus and Judas thought they were listening to the same person. You know what I'm saying? So when Judas did flip on Jesus, because everybody wonders, oh, why did Judas flip on Jesus? Was he just mm-hmm. a traitor? Or did he do it for money? Or was he jealous of Jesus? He just, he made him, he did what humans 
sometimes do. And Brandon was saying he can see a little bit of Judas in him and he can see a little bit of Jesus in him, which makes a lot of sense. I thought like, he did do it for money. I thought that was the idea. That he was the like thing, but they, 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 they was like, he. well, I read something that said he, if he was doing it for money, he could have got a lot more than he got. It was like 30 pieces of silver or something like that. And then he, it, with the irony of it is G Judas ultimately killed himself before Jesus because the guilt destroyed him. The guilt of turning in Jesus and then him finding out they was about to kill Jesus, he went and killed himself. Oh, he committed suicide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judas hung himself. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judas, Judas died before Jesus. Yeah. So uh, Brandon was just saying he can see himself in both of them. And he yeah. was like, he don't look at Judas as bad or Judas is good. He said, he just looks at Judas as human. And I was like, wow, I've never looked at it like that. Not whether I agree or disagree. I just thought that was a, a good take. But I'm saying all that to say, people are really repositioning it in their mind, uh, the whole Jesus thing, which is, kind of, which is kind of weird to me. It just dawned on me. So when he walked on water, okay, he was essentially hovering on the water, right? Um... I don't know if he was hovering. He just walked just on assuming. water. Yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe when he was on the cross, he wasn't hanging there. He was hovering. He just made everyone think. Could be. No, for real. Could be. Came Wait. back three days later. Who Wait said he was dead? Everybody leaves. Boom, we out. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was nailed. Yeah. Okay. But maybe. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> If you could turn water into wine, you could turn nails into Velcro. Okay. So maybe True. maybe he just kind of gets stuck up there. He's hovering. That's all. Put a little red wine on your hands. People think it's blood. You know what I'm saying? No. Just come on. Put a little red wine on your hands. You know what I'm saying? Dip turn, your hands in some water. Turn it into wine real quick. Turn it into wine. Boom. A little red wine on your hands. You up there. You know what I mean? You know what? They're going to bury me. We're going to be out in three days. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to pop up on these. I'm pop up on everybody. That's just bookends. <laughs> Bro. That was just bookends. He got arrested on Friday. Somebody rewrite the story of Jesus. Yo. <laughs> no, for real, man. He got a drunk in public on Friday. Jesus, they locked him up, brought him down to the tomb. Couldn't see the judge for the weekend. Couldn't see the judge. And it's a holiday weekend. It's a holiday. It's a holiday weekend. It's Easter. It's a Jesus. What you mean? No, no Alex did way, hey, Alex did way, Alex did way too much time to be Jesus. Jesus would have never been in there for 30 days. <laughs> never. A month. God would have never done that to Jesus, Alex. No. <laughs> Somebody needs to rewrite the story of Jesus. I'm serious. For How a would new you generation. Write it? I don't know yet, but I think the fact of the things that he used to do aren't as popping to this generation yeah. says a lot. Jesus is walking Wi Fi. You want to get some followers? Ooh. You want to get some followers? Ooh. Have them bars up. Ooh. Have them bars. You're just walking around like this. Anybody gets cell service Ooh. around you. Anybody gets internet around you as you walk by. Walking around your phone on 1%, he just touches it. 100. 100%. That's Whoa. It. <laughs> You're like, wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. Those are modern day miracles, man. I feel like I feel like it's a lot of things that have been written that are getting, I don't want to say played out. Played out isn't the right word. Go. But kind of played out, bro. Like, we need new things. We need new symbols. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, it's new symbols that are doing the same old thing. It's just represented and packaged in something new. So you accept it. In a different way, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just, I don't, I don't know, bro. I don't know if this Jesus thing is still getting a cracking like it used to. Well, some people <clears throat> say that might say that they do that with the Jesus story, like with Harry Potter or the Lion King or these other stories that kind of simulate. Harry Potter simulates Jesus. I think there's some there's some similarities between the Harry Potter story. And Ain't the no Jesus, Jesus in Lion King, bro. Is that right? No. I don't know. Maybe there isn't. But, like, uh, basically, the Jesus story's been retold a bunch. Really? Yeah. I mean, you know, Harry Potter's got these magic powers. Some might say the Jesus does. You know, it's yeah, not yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. abracadabra, but who knows what Jesus would say before he turned into wine. Maybe he said abracadabra. I think we got to turn Jesus into the story of the haters. Because that's what it was at the end of the day. Like, they was riding with Jesus until Jesus started getting popping. It's just like an artist, right? When an artist is putting out dope music and, you know, he got like a small fan base. Like, oh, you heard that new such and such? Like, I rock with it. But then when he starts getting big, they like, you know what? I don't really rock with Jesus too tough, bro. Jesus starting to feel himself. You know Lil what I'm Nas saying? Nas X, right? With Country Road, whatever it is. What's the song called? Country, old country, old country town. I, I like the record. though. It's a great record. I don't but know how now it's popping. About that. There's people just talking shit about. It. It's like just shut the fuck up. Let us enjoy a song. Who cares? Then not everything has to be broken. Down. And by the way, if you don't like the record, that's fine don't too. Listen to it. I, Why I, are you but, talking about it? But I'm not mad if you don't. Like I saw everybody get mad at Davies because he said he don't like the record. Who gives a shit? What's a Davies record? Mm. Um, what a 
some Davies records. I listen to Davies projects. I couldn't name. I, I don't really name too many of Davies songs. Yeah, what? Yes. My God, everybody started Googling. That's fucked up. But listen, <laughs> but even but even still, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but if Davies don't like the record, he don't like the record. Who cares? Like that shouldn't be. Listen, that should have never become a story. It should have never become a story. Hundred percent. If you like old country town or whatever it's called, what is the name of the song? Road. Old country. Old Road. country road. If you like the record, fuck with it. I, I like, like it. it. I love I it. I think it's a little bop. I love it. I think it's a bop. I love and it. And I love the one with Billy Ray Cyrus on it. Love it. Only thing I don't like about Lil Nas X is his name. What? I hate his name. <laughs> Why? Because I think that. All Nas's should be retired in hip hop. Like I don't think that you should be able to take the name of somebody who people consider like a legendary great person. Like you got to retire that name unless right. his name his name's not really Nasir. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the X thing, it's like yo, that could be DMX. You know what I mean? Like right. X to the Z exhibit. Like eh, unless your name is Xavier or Nasir, don't do it. That's all. Put it up in the rafters. Put There's certain things her. like you shouldn't be able to just. Say I'm little Nas X, like nah, right. you know what I mean. Certain things should be retired. Just you know, just brainstorming here. Mm -hmm. Aren't you named after someone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was popping or not. <laughs> The original Charlemagne was. Who said Charlemagne was popping? Yo, son, He's not his spreading his religion and education. Yo, shit. That shit have you like surpassed that. the original Charlemagne? That's a combo. <laughs> is this Charlemagne more popping than the last Charlemagne? It depends who you ask, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It's a generational thing. Can I be honest? Guess you? what? Ain't nobody around from Charlemagne's there to tell you how popping he was. I, mean, I, I got no fucking, fucking clue who that Charlemagne was. I really got no clue what that Charlemagne yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now nah, he was a Roman emperor. Uh, he, he was went, Roman. I thought he was French. He was French. French king. Hold on. Can we let Can we let Charlemagne say who he oh, thinks no, no, he no. was? I'm thinking about let Constantine. Charlemagne say what no, no, my bad. Yo, no. you know no, who no. needs a rebrand? Charlemagne. No, no. I'm thinking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm think, I was thinking about the Roman uh, emperor Constantine. Constantine. He was a French king, and he went about spreading religion and education. He spread religion and education. And education. Yes, and he had an empire called the Carolinian dynasty. And you're from. South Carolina. That's why I took the name. Ooh. Yeah. You sure he wasn't a Roman emperor, Chris? <laughs> yeah. Nah, he was like around the 12, 1300s. The Roman Empire had been toast for a while. But oh, yeah, yeah. He called himself the Holy Roman Emperor, I think. To try to recapture some of the, that energy. The glory of, of the Roman Empire. Oh, after okay. his death. Well, About 500 years later. Now listen, he ain't never made fucking Illmatic. Right. All right. Yeah. So his name don't get retired. Who? Charlemagne. Yeah, but... Charlemagne, do you think you've affected the world more than than that Charlemagne? I don't really know what the first Charlemagne did. Yo, same, bro. <laughs> Yo, same, bro. Same, bro. Like, Was he syndicated? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. Like, what did he do? We're giving a lot of people credit for things, bro. Honestly. <laughs> Charlemagne, I think you might be more popping than the original Charlemagne, bro. Like, let's really, let's call it what it is. What the fuck did he, that guy do? You definitely the most popping Andrew. Because I'm gonna tell you why. No, Hold I'm gonna on, tell let you me why. Take on it. Let no, me I'm gonna tell you it. why. Because <laughs> most everybody named Andrew shortened it to Andy. So you had Andy Griffith, you had Andy Dick, you had Ooh. Andy Milanoskis. Nobody was out here like yo, I'm Andrew. Dice Clay. Andrew Dice Clay. Nah, you got him. I got Dice. You got dice. You got I got dice. dice. I got Dice. Now you got Dice. You got Dice. Not back in the day. You got Dice. You got dice. You got dice. You got dice. I got dice. Bro. You got dice, bro. I, I got dice. Come I'm on, putting man. it out there. You got dice, man. Yang. Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang just get, he just starting. He just cooking. Andrew Yang, come on. He just starting to cook. Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson. Nah, the twenty dollar bill more fire than him. You know <laughs> That's what I'm saying? True. You don't no, even know real. if he's on that shit. Pour it up true. with the honey. We'd be like, yo, what's up with that Franklin? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nobody ever be like, yo, with that Jackson. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yo, <laughs> like, yo I don't even think Jackson on the twenty. Who's on the he twenty? He is. He is on See, the twenty. I don't 20. even know who's on the ten then. We uh, Hamilton. Hamilton. Hamilton's on the ten. We were we were talking about we were singing some rap song. What was it the other day? All uh, about the Benjamins. Uh, uh, trying to get some grants like Horace. Horus. Uh, yeah. And, and Akash goes, man. Rappers used to be so humble. Like, he was trying to get 50. He wasn't even trying to get hundreds. 
<laughs> Should I get some Benjamins? <laughs> chill, 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 chill. That's a lot. Why don't we start at 50s and see where we go? Yo, that's crazy. I didn't even know that was about fifty dollar bills. I thought that was about actual grants. I thought it was about the sneakers from Horace Grant. And I was no, like, I thought it was about is? like grants, like grants, loans. Oh <laughs> that's what I thought it was shit. About. It might be a double entendre. Nah, it's grants like money, right? Grants what would he like get grants Horace. for? Like an art grant? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you want to start an art program or something like that? For, for underprivileged youth? It's possible. I fuck with Lil Nas X, though. I don't, I, I'm, t- oh I'm, yo, I'm so sick of old people complaining about what the youngsters are doing. Stop it. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Let them win. Like, this shit is so corny. And it's almost like, it's why do you want to be the get off my lawn guy? And I'm not saying that you got to be the, the the old person who's just obse- obse- accepting of everything. Yeah. But why do people go so hard? For shit that they don't like. And why do we care? They want attention. They got to be. It's kind of sad when you see the old dudes do it because, like, it's so clearly an attention grab. Like, everybody's gravitating towards this one thing that makes us feel good and it's enjoyable. Yeah. And you're so desperate for attention. Yeah. You just disagree with it so that people can talk about you, even if they're talking about you negatively. Yeah. It's kind of a... And it's for me, it's one of those things where, like, I see so... I see right through it. It's like no authenticity in it whatsoever. The kid is not saying anything. The song for me... He's not me, hurting nobody. He's not hurting nobody. There's nothing but it. And, and the song for me, to be completely honest with you, it's about not being... It's about saying you're not going to do... Uh, how do I phrase it? I'm going to do whatever I want. You can't tell me not to do this. Like yeah. there's a thing, there's a line in it. It's like, you can't tell me nothing or something like that, right? And it's like, hey, if I want to do a fucking country song, I'm going to do a country song. I don't care that I'm this young black kid and people expect me to do a different type of music. I'm going to do a fucking country song. I love the fact I that- I love the energy in that. I love the fact that Billboard didn't know what to do with it. I love the fact that something is so disturbing to an ecosystem that the the, the ecosystem, the industry doesn't even know what to do with it. Like, yes. what do we label this? Yes. Like, where do we put this? To me, that's when you know you're doing some groundbreaking, dope-ass shit. I don't even know where to put this at. What do you see that song as? Music. You know what yeah. I mean? I'll be honest with you. Like, I've never liked, uh, I don't think I've ever liked the labels on, the music. Labels on music. Especially when you had hip-hop artists like doing whatever the fuck they wanted to do. Yeah. When you had hip hop artists that decided y'all want to do, like he's not the first guy to do a country song. Nelly was fucking doing shit with Tim McGraw. And, Hell yeah. You know, fucking Florida Georgia marching band. What's the name of that? F- fucking Florida Georgia line. Florida Georgia line. Like yeah. Nelly been doing that kind of shit. Like, and then you had rappers that was singing and you know, you had rappers doing yeah. reggae music and Snoop did a gospel album. Like, yo, if, a artist wants to take a chance, let him take a fucking chance. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Like, it's music at the end of the day. Yeah. You know? And then when you talk about pop, yo, why are we acting like pop got a sound? <laughs> pop should never have had a sound, if you think about it. It doesn't have a sound. Pop just means it's popular music. What's the most popular music? Pop should have never had a sound. It should have been nothing that ever said, oh, this is a pop record. You know what I mean? Like, that, that should have never existed. It should have just been whatever the most popular music at the time is, is a pop record. Little Nas X is a pop fucking record. Yes. It's the most popular shit out right That's now. That's a great point. The fact that, yeah, popular music doesn't have a sound. It's what's most popular and usually a genre that is most popular. <coughs> or can it be any... Or, or should pop just be defined by whatever the most popular songs are, regardless of genre? So you could have Lil Nas X in there with an EDM song, with yes. a, a rock song. Yes, yes. That that should be the pop. Yes, the pop chart should reflect the most popular music. Yeah, nothing more, nothing less. I love that. Yeah, even with the uh, the award that you get for best pop song, fuck yeah. the category. Just have a most popular song, which doesn't have to be the most uh, the the most beautiful song or the best song. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's another category for m- the true musicality. What we think album of the year is, or what we think song of the year is. Maybe they're not as popular as some like Korean boy band, but they BTS. have BTS, right? Mm-hmm. But they have certain aspects of musicality that we really look up to. Similar to uh, like a movie that wins Best Picture in the Oscars. Oftentimes, it's not the movie that sells the most tickets. It's the movie that people yeah. thought had the best display of uh, you know cinema. Chris, is BTS popping in your house? He didn't. Even, he, the he, Korean. Yeah, he just made a noise, so you know they popping. He's just like, <laughs> wait. <laughs> of course, they're massive. Yeah, yeah, they're Backstreet yeah. Boys. Yeah. But are they across all, like, do, like, all kids like them or just Asians? No, I mean, I, I don't know much about them. 
What? <laughs> wow, Chris grabbing the mic for BTS. Oh, That's shit. how popping they are in his Let's house. Go. I don't know much about them. I'm assuming they're K-pop, and if they're K-pop, you know, the K-pop is popular throughout Asia. It's just not limited to Korea. And the, you know, my daughter's brought them up, so I'm assuming they're popular with American kids. I too. did mad K-pop shows, yo. It was like this K-pop video countdown. And I did like six episodes. <laughs> this was years ago, bro. It's like three, four years ago. And they just had me on here talking about all these different K-pop artists. Like they would show me the videos and let me hear the music and just have me comment on them. And I think they were trying to, it was basically like, what would it take for these groups to like break in America? And this aired in Korea. It aired in Korea. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Charlemagne, dude. baby. Fuck who the fuck is who the fuck is this Roman Emperor? I'm out of here. It's global, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what are y'all talking about right now? Charlemagne. Let's, let's pay some bills, man. Okay. Uh the URL is philo.tv. Okay? And I'm telling you that because I want you to say goodbye to expensive TV bills with Philo. Okay. Philo is the cheapest way to watch over 50 of your favorite channels. Like VH1, okay, MTV, BET, Nickelodeon, Lifetime, History, whatever. You can catch the biggest shows on TV like The Walking Dead, Love and Hip Hop, SpongeBob, and Paw Patrol for the kids, plus tons of classic shows and movies, all right? You can watch The Breakfast Club on Revolt. Now, you know Philo is popping when you can watch Revolt. Because you can't find Revolt on no cable packages, damn near. Right? But you can enjoy live and on-demand TV, plus unlimited recording with Philo. Save as many shows as you want and never miss a minute of the shows you love. Watch from your TV, phone, or computer whenever you want. Philo costs only $20 a month, so you'll save hundreds each month on your TV bill. Philo is available on Roku, iOS, Fire TV, Android TV, and Apple TV. There's never been a better deal on cord-free, commitment-free, hassle-free TV. To start your free trial, visit philo.tv slash idiots. That's P H I L O dot TV slash idiots. Now, do you, you watch ESPN, right? Of course. What are our thoughts on Will Kane? Will Kane, hold on, this is the Kate Smith? Yes. Explain but just in general. Because I don't know who he is. Okay. Who, Will Kane? Yeah. Well, well you need to start watching more Kate Smith. Oh, cable. Kate, Kate Smith. Kate though. Smith is Kate a Smith. woman who was born in 1907. She was born in Virginia. Right. Um, husky, so, little husky girl. Yeah, she sang uh, "God Bless America." She also had a nice little ditty called uh, "That's Why Darkies Were Born." Yes, um, actually, kind of a little bop to be honest with you. Another ditty <laughs> called. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we read all the lyrics on Flagrant Two this week. <laughs> we had, we had like a Kate. You didn't print out the lyrics, Taylor. <laughs> Son, I was reading them this, this morning. This shit is wild, B. Yeah, it's wild. But basically, the song is like about racism, and it's just about why black people were born. And it's another one called Pickaninny Heavy. Pickin we read that one. <laughs> Pickaninny, which I didn't know what a Pickaninny was until this morning. I thought that was like some Pokemon that you had to fucking find. So, yeah, yeah I didn't know what it was. A Pickaninny. Now, do you know? Yeah, it's basically a race, a, a, a little nigga baby. Oh, I thought it was. The word picnic comes from pickaninny, and that's when white people would go have a picnic when someone was about to get hung. Or it, I don't know. It if could it's, be that too. But when I when I the thing I read it just it's basically like a little black baby, or no, not a baby. Usually a, a usually a juvenile black person. Usually a young black person is a yes. pickaninny. Um, that's okay. why donkeys were born. Some, let's let's pick some bars from Kate Smith. Okay. Someone had to pick the cotton. Someone wait, hold had on, to, hold on, hold on. Okay. Can you give us some? Like, can we put that Old Town Road beat in the background? Ow. Like, okay, all right, just go for it though. Go. Someone for it. had to pick the cotton. Someone had to pick the corn. Someone had to slave and be able to sing. That's why donkeys were born. And, <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so basically, Kate Smith. And, and here's the thing, right? And I talked yeah. about this on Breakfast Club this morning. <clears throat> Kate Smith was born in 1907. Yes. But she was born probably like, what, I don't know, 50, 42 years after after slavery was abolished? I don't know. 1860, uh, 1867. 1863, 1863. Emancipation Proclamation. Yeah. yeah. So, so maybe like, I don't know, 50-something years after slavery yeah, yeah. was abolished. She was born about 42 years before the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Right. So you're born in Virginia. <clears throat> Pretty safe to say she's probably born in bigotry. You know yes. what I'm saying? That's the way yeah. the world was yeah. at the time. That's yeah. the way culture was at yeah. the time. She was a person who died when she was 79 years old. She died in 86. Yeah. She probably didn't even get a chance to evolve. And right. probably, by the way, we don't know how she felt in 86. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? So, so, so we, she probably didn't get a chance to evolve. She probably didn't get a chance to grow. Her, her art was a reflection of her life. Mm. The things that she saw, mm. these are the type of records she made. Mm. All right, cool. Well, Kane 
uh, is upset. I don't want to say he's upset, but he's defending the fact that her, her family doesn't feel like the New York Yankees and the Philadelphia Flyers. They don't want to play God, her version of God Bless America no more because of these racist songs. And they want to take down a statue. I think it's in front of Flyers yeah. Stadium. Yeah, they took it down. I don't think that we're canceling a person here. I think we're canceling behavior. Mm. Like, we're all grown now. You Like, we know better. When you know better, you do better. You mm. know what I'm saying? And I think that, you know, we should all take a page out of out of out of post war what Europe, right? Like when it came to like they don't they don't have statues of Nazis up. Like, you know, any right. any trace of Nazism right. they've gotten rid of. You know, they've apologized for that. You know what I mean? Right. The same way America should apologize for slavery and segregation and erase all traces of it. You're not getting rid of people. Right. You're getting rid of behavior. Right. Like why would anybody argue that these songs should still be playing? Sure. Yeah, I don't think these songs should be playing. I don't think yeah. the, the racist ones should be playing either. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I think the tricky thing that you go down is you go down this road where if you look in the past, everybody's fucked up. Yes, because culture shifted. Yes. so That's like building a statue of Snoop and then a woman's rights group come and goes, nope, he had bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. I'm not going to argue that. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How about this? <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. Okay. How about going to a statue of Martin Luther King and being like, well, how did he feel about gays? How did he, though? I would assume as a devout Christian that he might not have had the most progressive views about gays. I don't know, because I heard he had gay people in his team. Who I'm just the assuming. Guy that uh, Ruskin said, or... Was it Ruskin? Pe people have been sending around a uh, tweet. That, that links, I don't know if it's legitimate, to uh, Essence, I think it was, article that he wrote, like, he was doing an advice column and a gay teen asked him for advice. Chris, Martin Luther King ain't writing no Essence article, bro. Uh, <laughs> that's, well, that's when why was, I said I don't know was, if it's true. Chris, I don't know when Essence it's was not founded. Essence. When was Essence founded, bro? It's, it's Ebony. Ebony. Ebony, sorry. Yeah. Oh, Ebony, all right. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I've never read the article. But, I, I mean, I, I can understand what you're saying. I can understand why you would say that, because he was a, a Christian... Reverend, you know what I mean. So the right. Bible says that they don't, you know, they don't agree with homosexuality. But I don't know what his exact thoughts on homosexuality were. So he said this. He goes, I guess in that article, the type of feeling that you have. Uh, so this gay kid asked him. He goes, "I'm a boy, but I feel the way towards boys as I ought to feel towards girls. What can I do?" And he goes, and Martin Luther King goes, uh, uh, "The type of feeling that you have towards boys is probably not not an innate innate tendency, but something that has been culturally acquired." You are already on the road toward a solution since you honestly recognize the problem and have a desire to solve it. So, first of all, I don't believe he said that. That's fair. Yeah, but I do. If, if that is true, what he said, that can be applied to racism too. Then, I guess. I guess what I'm saying is like, I'm not going to listen to anybody that says take down Martin Luther King's statue because he might have said something homophobic or believe something homophobic yeah. in a time where that was a completely reasonable belief, right? Um, Oh, not even if it was a reasonable belief. That's what he b believed. That's what he was taught his whole goddamn life. Right. Just like this Kate Smith woman, right? Yeah. She's probably, you know, taught this whole thing. It's not like there's the internet and there's the access to yeah, things yeah, yeah. that are outside your vacuum. So it's like, it's just a tough precedent. It's like, it, is this woman judged by today's values a piece of shit? Yeah, she's a piece of shit. Why she was, was you born in 1907 in Virginia. That's the thing. If we look back, we're always going to find racism. We're always going to find homophobia, transphobia, you know, sexism, bigot. Like every dude back in the day was yeah. sexist. There's literally every dude yeah. was sexist. A hundred percent. And misogynistic. And misogynistic. A hundred percent. We are all objectified women. Like, yes. Take out bad. all the statues. Yeah. Take down every statue. Like, yeah. we're, there's no more statues. Like, don't have statues. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you why Kate Smith needs her statue taken down. Because she's fat. I don't know about that. It's like, who is she? Yeah. Why she get a whole it's statue? Absurd. Come on. Like, her shit don't slap like that. Dude, you know what the great irony of this is? She's this thick white woman, right? She's a doe. And who would appreciate her more than those black guys that she was singing about? <laughs> 
<laughs> she got good credit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Word like, <laughs> like who? A chunky she, white woman like that definitely had good she credit, bro. Would have been killing. You think that that she would have <laughs> yeah. written that song now? Hell yeah, no. Nah, 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 nah. That nah, would have nah. been a totally different song. She, uh, she probably died with a Jerome at the house. Of course. I'm serious. Absolutely. I say Jerome in the house. I'm serious. She probably died with a Jerome in the house, bro. I'm serious. <laughs> I'll tell you what darkies are for. <laughs> I just don't think she need a statue because her shit don't slap like that. Like when you talk about God bless America, her rendition ain't the fire shit. I don't even know. Whitney Houston, gonna, bro. Oh, just let Whitney sing them all. Whitney hey, had the fire God bless America all. rendition. Radio City Music Hall. When she sang to Roy Jones Jr. Fire. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, man. What year was this? I don't even fucking remember, but she fire. She sang to Roy Jones Jr.? Roy Jones Jr. It was some type of uh, tribute to Roy Jones Jr. I think. Yeah. Don't fucking quote me on that. Look, I just know I, that she's saying fucking God, God bless America. All I'm saying it. is at a certain point in time, we got to respect that the past is fucked. And literally, we can find a a, a, a personality flaw in yeah. every single figure of the past. Even our most impressive Figures, the figures that we love the most, you know what I mean? Like the figures that mean the most for us. So we have to f decide what we want to accept and what we can't accept for whatever reason. And maybe it's because the chicken is so good from Chick-fil-A, but we're totally fine with Chick-fil-A being like, yo, we don't fuck with gays. That's exactly what it is. Mayor Pete, my man, Mayor Pete said, yo, I don't agree with their politics, love but I love their chicken. So you know America's tricky, though. Would Mayor Pete go, I don't agree with Kate's politics, but I love her singing? No. And the reason uh, Mayor Pete wouldn't do that, well, no, he might. I'm just saying. Yeah, he might. But he, singing is different than the song. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you should cancel those racist songs. That's what I'm saying. She but, might can blow. I never. She might can really get, get down. If I know fat women like I do, <laughs> <laughs> blowing is something should have been capable. over for her. Because when fat ladies sing, it's usually over. <laughs> 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 we're not shaming and plus if you think we're shaming she's racist fuck it exactly <laughs> listen you gotta keep some racist so we got people to make fun that's of that's all just keep them around so we can clown them it is to clown the body shame somebody when they're racist you're racist that's right you were shaming someone else's whole body y'all clown Trump all the time for his badly built ass so we can't Hey, come on now. Kate's gonna energy, get these God jokes. Damn. That's right. She's gonna get these jokes. You saying you ain't eating no soul food, Kate? You saying? <laughs> so so how, how deep does your hate for black people go? Exactly. You ain't never had your Kate, huh? You ain't never had chitlins, huh? Some pecan come on pie. Now. Come on some, now. Look, some pecan pie, Kate. You telling me you said no to pecan pie? <laughs> you don't get calves and ain't. You don't get cankles. Not eating no goddamn pecan pie. <laughs> All right. Listen. How do we feel though about? Like, statues of Robert E. Lee. How do we feel about highways being so, named after Strom Thurmond? Statues of Robert E. Lee is a good one, right? Okay. I think that Robert E. Lee is a traitor of America, right? Mm. He's somebody who tried to start another country. Well, he was the general of the army that started another country who tried to secede from America. So to me, you're a traitor. We should never have a statue of a traitor within our country. Mm. You're a traitor, right? This okay. is no different than... I guess, uh, I guess you know, maybe the way Germans view Nazis is as traitors as well. It's okay. like it wasn't, you know, I don't know how they view I'm not sure. But, like, for me, when I see Robert E. Lee and I see if there's a statue of any sort of him, it's like, why? You tried to destroy what America is. Why would we support you at all? Good point. Can't you say that about Strom Thurmond? Isn't Strom Thurmond a traitor of sorts? And I'm going to tell you why. Tell me why, yeah. He what is he, South Carolina governor? South Carolina governor. He, started, he, he tried to start a senator. 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 He tried to start the Dixie crap movement. You okay. know what I'm saying? So basically, black people are Americans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you're start creating a movement to where you want to continue to oppress and, mar and marginalize this other group of Americans. Take them down. You're technically being a traitor. Take them down. You know what I'm saying? So why do you get a building named 100%. after you? Why do you get a highway named after you? So I, I think it's something that we can learn from post-war Europe, man. Like, there's no statues of, of— Is that what he did? Was that his legacy for America? I guess that's what I'm trying um, to understand. That because... and fathering uh, kids with black women. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's full of shit. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Pecan pie. Pecan pussy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everybody racist. And tell them, tell them warm, hot things hit the table. All right? And when them warm, hot things hit the it's table, no. everybody want to sneak a little bit. Yeah, everybody's equal. <laughs> there, you, there you go. Okay, so that's an interesting one because if you look at the founding fathers, I'm sure they were racist. You know, like all the founding fathers yeah. were racist. Um, 
And they were restricting the rights to citizens of America. They were restricting the freedoms to— yeah. Well, I mean, maybe at the time they weren't citizens, and maybe at the time— It was culture. It was part of the culture. You hate to say it, but it was culture. And it's it's one of those things, like, should we not look up to African kings that had enslaved people? Like, I'm sure Mansa, Mansa Musa wasn't paying minimum rate, wage. You know yeah, what I mean? He's like, the richest man in the world. He might have. You think he was paying minimum <laughs> wage this motherfucker? <laughs> five fifty for you, five fifty for you. Yeah, I guess yeah, what I'm saying yeah, is like yeah, yeah. if we look back, everybody's a piece of shit. And it makes us feel good to sit up on our high horse and tap ourselves on the back and go, look how awful people used to be back in the day. Look how good we are now. But America's a unique experience though. Is only it? Be- yeah, only because we live in like this this great American melting pot and we we stress equality so much. You know what I'm saying? And we we talk about how we hate prejudice and we hate racism and we hate bigotry. You know, we hate sexism. We hate homophobia. So you kind of do got to wipe the slate clean in order to start over. Like, if you know that that history exists, cool, it's in books. You know what I mean? You don't need to have a statue up about it. You know what I'm saying? Don't need to have a highway named after any of these kind of people. You know what I mean? So it's just like we kind of do got to wipe the slate clean clean in order to be what we say we actually are which is the land of the brave home of the free yeah i mean some people look i I don't know how it makes people feel like i never looked at the name of the highway yeah yeah yeah. do you know what i mean like i never i never really cared about that but then again me neither until you do research yeah yeah me neither until somebody points it out to you like so now it's almost like by pointing this out are we making it worse like do you think kids really know who the fuck strom thurman is yeah. No, Chris. Don't say it so convincingly. After when you do Ask your research, kids who Strom Thurmond is, Chris. I mean, not at their age. <laughs> you don't know, Taylor, who like, I don't know who that is. Taylor don't know who it is. Alex don't know who it is. Was when hold, I was on, 15. S- hold on. Speak for speak for the blacks in the room, Chris. Go. I knew who he was when I was fifteen. How's that speaking for anybody else? I'm from South Carolina, so it's different. You know what I'm saying? So Taylor got no clue. Okay. Alex got no clue. Dwayne Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from South Carolina, so it's different. So I, right. I, I grew up knowing who Scrom Thurman was. I grew right. up knowing about Scrom Thurman Highway. I used to drive on it. You I probably... worked out in Scrom Thurman Building, which was on USC's campus. But but South Carolina is different because there's they always was these reminders of the old South right. in my state. You had right. the Confederate flag flying over the state house lawn. They used to always protest that every year. It took nine people getting shot in the church. For and this guy story. to be on his Instagram or Facebook draped out in the flag for them to take it down. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's like some people may not know who Denmark VC is. You know what I mean? Denmark VC was a let was about to lead one of the largest slave revolts in the history of America ever. Right. You know, but he's from Charleston, South Carolina. So it's just like if you're from a certain place, you know, then you know the history of these people. You know, so it's just like Strom Thurmond buildings being named after Strom was always a why the fuck is buildings being named after that? racist like that was always yeah. a thing like that was never not a thing growing up for me yeah i, I could see that yeah i it, i think it's completely reasonable i guess i guess the slippery slope is okay let's say we stop you know we stop where we change names do we change you know george washington do we take him off shit do we take abraham lincoln off shit well maybe not lincoln but like do we take actually yeah lincoln lincoln had some questionable views within the context of today mm-hmm. within the context of back then he was one of the greatest humans in history culture man like culture changes like we got to you do have to acknowledge the shift in cultures like it's easy to look at kate smith and say oh she was a racist let's look at it in context was she a racist yes but why was she a racist yeah she was a racist because she was born in virginia in 1907 <laughs> she was born into bigotry she wasn't racist she just was she just was that's nah, how people nah, were nah, nah, for real she was nah you're right right it's like yeah, 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 we're yeah, yeah, asking yeah. people to be different types of people now that we know what we can be yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. in you realize in in 100 years or no 50 in 25 years we're going to look back at the fact that we let, and somebody, a comic was telling me this, I forget exactly what his name for, but we're going to look back at the fact that we let our kids use phones and iPads all day. And we're going to look back at that no differently 
then we look back at cigarette companies 100%. selling cigarettes to kids. That's why everybody needs to read the book Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. 100%. Like, he breaks that shit down. 100%. But not everybody's a Cal Newport, right? Yeah. Like most people are like, well, yeah, just watch some more iPad. Watch some more of your phone and be locked in and addicted to your phone, yep. right? And in 25 years, maybe 30 years, we're like, what the fuck were we thinking? You wonder, are we why, everybody crazy? Got, yep, you wonder why everybody got fucking anxiety. You wonder why kids got AD motherfucking D. So like, we look at Steve Jobs now like he's some hero. In the future, he could be Hitler. Yeah, yeah. Man, look what yeah, you fucking yeah, did to yeah. a generation yeah. of human beings. You got yeah. them addicted to their phone. You're putting cancer up to their ear, giving brain cancer to everybody. You monster. Until Steve comes back and says, I didn't make it for all of this shit. <laughs> all right? I made this shit for y'all to make motherfucking phone calls and texts. <laughs> After I died, y'all added all this other bullshit. all the cool shit. All right? That's true. Yeah, I didn't create Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all this shit that is really, really just stealing your attention. They get paid based off how much mindless hours you spend, you spend on this bullshit device. Steve Jobs like, I didn't create this shit. Mm -hmm. Don't put this shit on fucking I me. I just wanted songs in your phone, bro. That's it. I just didn't want you to carry around a CD case. I was just trying to get all these Kate Smith songs in one motherfucking place. <laughs> That's all the fuck I was trying to do. That's all I was trying to do. I got tired of grabbing the God Bless America CD and then grabbing the Pick a Nigga, nigga song and then the fucking the darky, why darkies dance shit. Like, I got tired of all of that shit. Yeah, it's a that's, lot of CDs. That's all Steve was... That's all he literally was trying to do. All that other shit, these new motherfuckers at it. So maybe we try to judge people within the context of their time. Maybe we calculate how racist on a scale of 1 to 10 the world was at that time. And if the person is more racist than the world was, then we go, okay, you gotta get canceled. You're out of here. You were racist even within your time. That's tough, though. That's that's it's a tough thing to do. But like Abraham Lincoln was clearly less racist than his time. Right. So we could applaud him because you were able to be progressive in your time. Yeah. But maybe Strom Thurmond was more racist within his time. Uh, so we're yeah. like he wanted to start his own party. Right. I get, <laughs> the so, Dixie Crest. so I'm like, yeah. I'm like, all right, so let's get you out of here because yeah. you were worse than your time. And maybe we should only applaud those people who were better than their time. You went 70 and it's, the speed limit was 65. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. If, you're, if you're speeding within your time, we got to get you out of here. But if you're driving a speed limit or even less than the speed limit, yeah. you're really looking out for all the other drivers on the highway? I thought about that when it comes to old content, right? Like I said... Um, I think I just figured out what to do with all these statues in history, guys. What? I think that was it. What? We, ju we just judge you based on how fucked up you oh, were within you, the context you, you, of the of time the you lived. Yeah. I, I, I was talking about that with... Um, like, imagine you're driving down Scrum Thurman Highway. Yeah. Right? And Scrum Thurman Highway, 20 years ago, the speed limit was 55. Right. Right? And you're getting head from your white girlfriend. You're like, Haha, who wins? So, but listen, <laughs> so you're just driving down the highway and you're doing 55 yeah. miles per hour. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then you might even go 60. Yeah. Because the speed limit was 55. So, you know, you can get away with a little bit more. Yeah. Right? Uh, 20 years later. <clears throat> okay, let me flip that. 20 years ago, the speed limit on this highway is 70 miles per hour. Right. So you might even do 75 because that's the speed limit at the time. At the time. So you're, you're, you're hauling ass 20 years ago. Vroom, right. vroom, 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 vroom. Yep. 20 years later, they changed the speed limit on this highway to 50, 55. Why? Because there was too many accidents on this road. Right. You know, too many people were getting killed. Right. You know, so they was like, it's safer for everybody to go 55. So yeah. you start doing the speed limit as you fucking should. Times have changed. The laws on this road have changed. You realize that it's not safe for you to do 70. So you start doing 55. Right. Cool. Imagine if you go to your mailbox and you start getting tickets from 20 years ago because <laughs> you was doing 70 miles per hour. You'd be like, what the fuck? Fuck! That was the speed limit the 20 years ago. I adjusted because I learned better. Exactly. And when you know better, you should do better. Now, if you're still speeding on the fucking 55 20 years later, you deserve to crash. If you die, nobody's going to feel sorry for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You deserve all the speeding tickets that you fucking get, all the fines you get. They're going to mm -hmm. take your license away. You deserve every single punishment because times change and you did not change with it. You know what happens yeah, if you yeah. don't evolve? You die. You die. And... And even furthermore, if back in the day when the speed limit was 75, if you chose to go 95, you that, deserve a ticket. You're dumb. No, you deserve to die. Okay, you deserve to die. Because you can start fishtailing and, Boom, like, and you're out of here. And you're out of here. Bye. And now when we look back at you in history, we could be like, oh yeah, that motherfucker was speeding, speeding. even back in the day. Word up. So why are we celebrating this dude who was breaking the law even back then? Absolutely. Simple 100%, as that. 100%. And by the way, people are not going to feel sorry for you. If you got not a family, yo, if, you, if you got a family... And you're doing 95 miles per hour. Yeah. And you crash. Somebody in your family is gonna be like, 
This motherfucker don't know he got kids to get home to. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck was he doing 95, 4, and 7? Like, they're going to be looking at you like you're stupid. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is when the, when the times change, change people cha you got to change with them. Barack Obama ran for office saying that marriage is between a man and a woman. Within one term... Somebody said that this morning on Breakfast Club. I don't remember. I didn't remember the first, that. His first election. Okay. Within one term, it became... He became the president, I think, that was sitting while... Gay marriage became legal. Is it that did, right? right? Yeah, yeah. He legalized gay marriage. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so think about what can happen you if you, you let learn. people change. That's it. You live and you learn. So we have to judge Barack within the context of the time. But at that time, yeah, maybe the rest of us thought that obviously a marriage could be between gay people. Mm -hmm. But for politicians and for how the world operated at that political level— it was never meant to be like that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. once he got power, he was able to implement or at least help implement a more progressive strategy. I'm not going to hold Barack accountable for that first election. By the way, that's I'll how, hold him for the second one. That's how you know. He had to get in. That, that's what I'm trying he to say. He got in regardless. But that, that, that's what I was about to say. It, it, he, he was a very conservative guy. Like he was always willing. I mean, people don't say this about him, but he was willing to sell out a little bit to get to the next stage. Like Bill Clinton. And when did then he, once he got he, to the next stage, he cleaned it up a little bit. When did he legalize gay marriage? His second term? He was second term. In? I don't remember. Second term, second term. Okay. My, my point is, when you got the power, you don't have to conform. That's how you know he really learned. You know what I'm saying? Because he had the power. If you're already in, I'm in second term, baby. You maybe know what it mean? was the end of the first term, but he was in. Right. He was in. Disappointment was once he got in on the second term, he wasn't more aggressive in doing stuff. He legalized gay marriage. What do you? What do you? What do you if, I mean, more aggressive doing stuff for who? Just more progressive stuff. I mean, he was pretty much a centralist in a lot of ways. He should have mm -hmm. made it only gays can get married. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get married, you marry a dude. Aggressive is polygamy, Barack. Right. <laughs> Yo, all, that, all that little one-on-one -on -one shit is cute, dick to dick, man to woman, whatever. But polygamy is the shit. If Bro, you want to be progressive, But progressive. maybe gay marriage is how you start that. I've been said that. Think about it, because you do. You I make... don't want to sound too happy about this, but I've been said that. Yo, gay marriage, you make gay marriage legal yeah. first. Then you and your wife can legally marry another woman. Come on now. In order for polygamy, you need to be gay. Come on now. What? Thank you, Wait Barack. <laughs> what? <laughs> Go back again? Okay, so okay. you you and your wife are married, right? Yes. Now, you want to add another woman to the marriage, right? Ooh, okay. I, see. I like this. Right, right. All now, right. that woman marries you and your wife. Yes, okay? yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. He, I like he said, yes. yes. <laughs> Shout out to the LGBT. I like this. Now, right. so in order for in order for that well, that woman to marry your wife, she gay marriage got to be legal. Boom. So Barack throws the oop. Ooh. We slam it down. Cheating is back. Cheating is back, No, it's baby. not cheating. It's not cheating. It's not cheating because we're all married. Oh. Now, Okay, okay, okay. Now, who's going to put that on their 2020 agenda? <laughs> Taylor's so Who's going to put that on their 2020 Taylor's agenda? fucking face. So I need tight. this on somebody's 2020 agenda. Man Pete, what's up? Buckeye. Tim Ryan, what's happening? Nah, nah. Kamala, Mayor what's going do on? It. Mayor Pete going to do it, bro. Oh, well, yeah. He, he's about anything. I fuck with Mayor Pete. I don't care what nobody says, bro. Everybody love Mayor Pete. If, 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 you, if you hating on me, nah, they been fucking with him bad what, this week. What'd they say? Like somebody dressed up as Satan and then somebody else dressed up as Mayor Pete and it was like they were yelling you're going to Sodom Sodom they was yelling Sodom and Gomorrah at one yeah. of his rallies, like yeah. like dumb shit. You, you know think, what I'm saying? Yeah, but he's used Yo, he to had that. the hardest ball though. What he said? Mayor Pete said I thought you were gonna say he had the hardest dick. <laughs> I don't wanna miss, I don't wanna misquote him. He said, Well, when they was ch chanting Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. he goes, Well, luckily those guys or those people chanting that don't decide where my soul goes. But y'all do decide the Iowa caucus or something. I, I know I'm wording it horrible. Right. But the way he did it was a bar. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, it, it was such a bar, it was like, all right, he planted those guys in the audience. <laughs> he, plant, he planted those. That was a great ball off the top. And I'm saying, Mayor Pete's a witty guy. Yeah. But that was a hard ball. And it yeah. was so perfectly timed. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah he might have planted it. Did you ask him if he was the top or bottom? <laughs> nah, but last night on CNN, they played him last night because they had the presidential town hall. And uh, I, it was, it was what's the lady's name? Kristen Cumberbomb or something like that? I can't yeah. remember. Her. She went first. And then it was Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, and Pete was the last one. And when uh, Bernie was done, the guy goes, we got Kamala Harris coming up, and then we got Mayor Pete at the bottom, but Don Lemon's going to handle that one. <laughs> <laughs> He said Don Lemon's yeah. gonna handle that. Don Lemon got it, and I was like, "Whoa!" I was like, "Nobody heard that." But then Don didn't even interview Mayor Pete. 
It was Anderson Cooper. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's insider trading. Yes, Don interviewed Kamala. Yeah. So I was like, what the fuck? Now, how do we feel about Don, Don uh, Lemon uh, having a white husband, bro? He couldn't keep it black. Most woke, most woke black people got white, <laughs> <laughs> white significant others. That's, 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 that's usually how it goes. It's the truth, though. Yo. Most woke black people have a white significant other. We've seen that a lot. Why lately. is that? I don't, I really don't know, to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? I really don't yo, know. Yo, Taylor got all the answers, yo. Come here, Taylor. You Taylor wanna... with your face. <laughs> Taylor with your fucking Five face. Five what? Woke. Besides uh, Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele? Childish Gambino? Yeah. Van Jones? Yeah. Fucking Don Lemon? Don Lemon? Um, who, who the fuck? Don I'm not, Lemon I, is gay. He got one husband. I, I, I can name some women right now, but I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I'm, name them. No, I don't want to no smoke with them. Come on. No, 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 no. Leave that alone. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. But trust me, it's a lot of woke uh, black people. Black women don't count, though. Oh, what? Why, Je- why Jesse, Will- count? Didn't Jesse Williams and he with a white chick now? No, no, no. Jesse got a, a queen. But he was with a white chick for a minute. Her name's Taylor, too. Oh, word. So y'all Taylor's black. And Jesse's biracial. Oh, so don't count? Yeah, nah, I don't count. Okay, who else? I'm not saying, but I named four off the top quick, fast, in a hurry. Because Taylor acted like they, they don't exist. Can you name name she the said, ones that got a black, that are keeping it black? Name the woke ones keeping it black. That's okay. a good New York article. <laughs> <laughs> New Yorker. Um, Charlemagne. Charlemagne ain't woke. <laughs> fucker ain't uh, woke. Well, to be honest with you, I don't even like the word woke uh, because I feel like a lot of woke people need some sleep. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Le- LeBron James. Can we make her? That, Can we make him? On, but LeBron ain't like he's come not. On, he's not full time activist. Is what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like that's okay. Like his thing. All right, all right, he's all right. So what about um? Is Michael Eric Dyson? Is he married? You just randomly Michael is not Michael not with no white woman. You're not even married. married. No, I thought we were talking about that with is the he black married? woman. That's what I'm saying. Is he oh, uh, I, I think I thought Michael was getting a divorce. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. Though. I don't know. Ooh, white women, watch out. I think people know that. <laughs> I don't know. Is Michael married? I'm not sure. Uh, the fact that you can't name one Oh, and is Kendrick Lamar, my homie. Huh? I love Kendrick. Y'all slandered Kendrick on social media no. four years ago because y'all said his woman was too light-skinned. Stop it. No, it's not me. I didn't say anything. The moral of the story. Who? Yeah, Michael, Michael got a black woman. The moral of the story is a lot of people that are woke sleep white. Now, whoa, bar. I'm just saying. A lot of woke people that are woke sleep white. Now, here's the question. In the words of Killer Mike, uh, my wife is black. A lot of my critics' wives are not. It's the truth. Here's my question for you. Is it possible? Is it possible that their extreme wokeness is due to their... White is significant due to other. their white significant other and the guilt that they feel about being with a white woman, not being with a black woman. So they make up for it publicly. Overcompensate. They're overcompensate. It's yeah. like a guy with a small dick who got a nice car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's th- what was that? Um, they're gonna get so mad at me. <laughs> why you say? Why did you yell out "fuck light skinned women"? No, I did not say that. <laughs> what's I wrong with like, you? What's, what's no, the problem? No, don't do that. I, you ever notice that like? Light skin. I mean, my mom's one of them. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's real light. Yeah. And I feel like they're more, like, Woke. trying to be more oh. pro-black. Yeah, because they're because trying to earn it. Yeah, exactly. Akash so. would always say, I think it was Akash who said something about this, but he said that about the, uh, the, 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 the Israelite, the black Israelites, like, the most, like, fervent ones on the street, mm-hmm. like, saying, fuck white people the most, were the ones that were the lightest skin. <laughs> yeah. It's like that with white people, too, though. White people who are married to to black women mm-hmm. go hard for black people, <laughs> like super, super pro black with it. Like, like, and I'm cool. I'm I'm fine with that because I'm all for people using their privilege to combat prejudice. Right. But what is the angle? Is it really because you think that this stuff is wrong, or because you got a queen at the I don't house? Oh, they got kids. I think it's kids. I think it's, yeah, I think it's true, about the kids. True, true, I think it's true, about the kids, true. and I think it's like, I think there's two things, right? It could be that they're just really. You know, like faking the woke shit. Yeah. And the other thing is, they know their kids are black, and like they're gonna be really sensitive to anything that happens to black people because yeah. now they've got something invested in the game. It ain't just about a white guy going, "Hey, we gotta hey look out for these black people," but not really giving a fuck. It's yeah. like, yo, if they out here killing black people, that's my kids. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. 
But there is something. That's why I think a lot of Kim Kardashian's uh, energy comes from. Yo, it could be. Yeah, yeah. I think. The, I think. I, I mean, she loves black people, but I, the fact that you do have black kids, she got a black. Her son looks black. You know what I mean? You don't have the same complexion as North and, and mm-hmm. the rest of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's her, yeah. That is an interesting thing. Little Saint is brown. Yeah, you know. I'm gonna tell you something about Don Lemon though. Don Lemon, yeah. Don Lemon had one of the greatest rebrands. Whoever rebranded Don needs to rebrand Jesus. Because I remember when Don, I remember when black people hated Don Lemon. Right. I remember when Don used to catch all the slander. I remember when Don was standing on TV with a sign that said, nigger, and saying, does this offend you? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It was a period where people used to look at Don the way they looked at, like, Paris Denard or one of those guys like that. And it's just like... Throughout, when 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 Trump started, you know, to pick up steam and Trump got elected, it's like Don transitioned with it, and it's just like Don Damn started it. challenging, you know, these people that would come on his show, and he yeah. just got really black. Can we talk about how forgiving black people are? Yeah. Well, how do you view that? It's I, think, I mean I wildly think, I, forgiving. I, I, honestly, man. I think the, the 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 community that should be the most happy for black people's forgiveness is white people. I don't know if we get the same forgiveness from y'all, but I no, think no, you, no. you forgive your own. We def- No, we're way harder on us than we are white people. Okay. What, about, no, what about what about yay, man? Yay's out here selling church merch. And and, and so what? Like, and, I, I saw people getting mad about that. And I'm like, bro, suits my guy DJ Envy. Love Envy. Yeah. Envy been selling my God versus my enemies tees forever. Hey, yo, Jerry Lorenzo out here with fear of God. Like, will, why are y'all mad at Kanye? Because he put God on his clothes. No, that's a good point. I also thought about, like, how many people have a cross chain. <laughs> like, who's that? that who, that's my name is Charlemagne Jesus? the God. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Jay-Z is over to God. Like, yeah, yo, yeah, we mad yeah, at yeah, Kanye yeah, because yeah, 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 he's yeah. putting mur- he, he had yeah. a song called Jesus Walks right. back in the day. Right. Like, right, what right. are we mad about Kanye? But like, see, that's how I know people aren't totally forgiving a Kanye. That's interesting. Because they're picking they're and still choosing. Looking. They're still yeah, looking. Yeah. Who cares? But speak on the forgiveness thing, because I saw this popping up on Twitter a lot. Mm-hmm. And like there was this idea of like, you know, black people, we uh, we forgive the most. That's what I saw people. I think that about. we forgive the most, number one, because of our spiritual nature. You know, because of the fact that a lot of black people are very religious and that's what the Bible says that you should do. Right. You know, and I also think that, you know, when it comes to each other, we're very hard on each other. Uh, but when we do forgive each other, it's because we just feel like it's screen for numbers and it's huh. not a lot of us. And, you know, you can't just cancel somebody from your community. I feel that way anyway, though. I feel like we shouldn't cancel people. We should cancel behavior. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and and by the way, if somebody commits such heinous acts that, you know, their behavior cancels them out, so be it. Right. It's not my fault Bill Cosby was out here doing what he was allegedly doing. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, I have I, nothing I can do about that. Right. So if Bill Cosby's gone forever, cool. Maybe he need to be. Maybe he needs to spend the rest of his life getting his soul right because it's not about what we Think about Bill Cosby. Right. If you truly do believe in the afterlife and you truly believe that there's a heaven or there's a hell, you want your soul to be right. Not to right. mention just for legacy's sake. You got kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got grandkids. That's not the way you want to go out, is it? So I would just hope for for his for himself, he gets it together. You know what I'm saying? More so than, you know, him getting it together because he wants the the, the, the love of the public again. You know, but to, but to answer your question, I think that people, black people, are so forgiving because of our spiritual nature, because that's what we were we were taught to do. Hmm. You know, turn the other cheek, love, forgive. You know, that's what I think. Do you think white people are forgiving? I think. I mean, I said I don't know. Are they? I don't know. I've never thought about people they as a group no. being forgiving. I don't think so, because like white kids grow up to hate their parents. If you can't forgive your goddamn parents after they didn't raise you for your whole fucking life, you ain't really a forgiving person. Yeah. Why do we hate our parents? And I mean, think about, you know, think about white kids who who parents don't like black people and then they fall in love with a black person and the parent cut them off forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dude, like, have like, I ever told you the Patrice O'Neill bit about racism? No. Nah. So Patrice O'Neill heard. is my favorite <clears throat> comic. Goat. Ever. I think he's the best ever. And uh, he has this amazing bit about racism. He goes, he goes, and Patrice, Patrice is a black comic, by the way, for anybody listening. He goes, he goes, let me get this straight. So y'all bring us over here from Africa. 
You make us work for free. You beat the shit out of us. Break us up from our families, right? Don't let us get loans. Don't let us build up any wealth. And you're mad at me? <laughs> that's real. For real. How the fuck does this make any sense? Yeah, but see, that's just a real observation. But how beautiful is it? It's like, yes. you've never seen anybody chalk up racism that beautifully. You put it in perspective, word up. It's like, Absolutely. what are you angry about? That's why I don't understand people like Will Kane. That's why I don't understand people who don't understand the reparations conversation because the reparations is not about handing out checks. It's about acknowledging the fact that America systemically did something wrong to a group of people mm -hmm. that put them in a certain position. And now America needs to do something systemically to get them out. Like simple as that. Right. Like it's nothing to even argue about or be mad. You should want that for your fellow Americans. It's not going to well, hurt you do. at all. People do, right? I mean, that's what affirmative action about. That's what, yeah. I mean, there are things that are in place that are not the exact idea of reparations, but they're in spirit reparations. Yeah, I was talking to a politician. I'm not going to say their name. And they was talking to me about the hood. And he was like, yo, you know the one thing no presidential candidate ever wants to say about the hood? <laughs> Is the hood needs everything. You know what I'm saying? Like it needs, it literally needs everything. Admitting that an area in America needs everything is admitting that America has not done their job for its people. So nobody wants to admit that until somebody can have the balls, right? And I'm, I'm saying this men or women. Have the test I don't want to say testy, whatever. Say the balls. Yes, yeah, the balls. We the motherfucking stand up and say... Look, certain areas are fucked up. You know who said it? Who? Trump. Did he? I don't know, bro. He said, and 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 the fucking, everybody went crazy on him. What'd he say? There's a big quote, and everybody was shitting on him. And he was like, he's like, look, the communities are doing horrible. It's awful. Oh, what he said, African Americans, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, what do you have yeah, to lose yeah. maybe is not phrasing that you like, but it is exactly what you're saying. Yeah, but that was just for votes, though. I mean, that's what all politicians are doing, Yeah, yeah, right? but... Like, yeah, let's judge you, people within the you. context yeah, yeah, and error, yeah, yeah. but he's I'm basically like, what do you have to lose? Like, it's not working out with these Dems. They're not doing... Yeah, yeah, you might yeah, as well yeah, try yeah, something yeah, different. Yeah, 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 you got nothing... And people... But he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't implement nothing, though. He didn't show us anything of substance. I would have... I would, I, listen, I love a statement like that, but then I'm like... What Here's the black agenda, baby. Right, right, right. All right? right, right this is right, what the right, fuck right. I got for y'all. Right, right. This is what I'm going to do for the inner cities, yada, yada, sure. yada. Cool. But, he, but you're right. He but you saw that. how he got attacked, and I think the reason why maybe other politicians aren't willing to say that is because the second they do say a blanket statement like that, immediately you're going to have certain woke folks reach out, and they're going to go, oh, so you think this is what black people are? You think our black communities are this, that, the other? Let me just tell you that these successful people have come out of these black communities. How dare you sure. chalk up our... And the reality Those are the lucky is, ones. If you, thank you. If you want change... Those are the ones that beat the system. If you want change, you need real talk. And yeah. a lot of motherfuckers don't want real talk, yeah. so they're not going to get real change. Yeah. But real talk is sitting there going, yo, it needs everything. Yeah. So what... Do, are you all ready to admit that to yourselves? Yeah. It needs everything? There's a couple outliers that are going to make it out. You know who's going to lead that conversation? Pouring disenfranchised white people. Pouring disenfranchised hmm. white people who are in these same situations right hmm. now, who are sitting around waiting on the coal mines to come back, are sitting around waiting on these jobs to come back, and hmm. they're fucking fucked up financially. They're going to be the ones that say, we need every goddamn thing. We need everything in our motherfucking area. The schools is fucked up. Mm. We don't have no jobs here. Like, they're going to be the ones probably to lead that motherfucking charge, mm. you know? But all I'm simply saying is I don't understand why any presidential candidate is afraid to admit that because it's not like they created the condition. This is shit that's been going on in America for hundreds of years that caused these conditions to happen. Now, you could be the first person to get, up, get us about that shit, though. Because people talk about a generation. Generation really ain't that long. No. I think a generation is 10 years. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. The 10 year olds now, you snatch them up, you plant certain things in their head, you plant certain seeds in their head, whether it's about technology or spirituality, you teach them what they should be eating, you give them social and emotional learning, whatever it is. In 10 years, they're going to be 20. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, they become functioning adults. Yeah. They become adults that know what this world really truly needs. Like yeah. we talk about generations, like it's hundreds and yeah. hundreds and hundreds of years. It's really not. You could change a generation every couple, every 10 years, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I'm with you. I think, yeah, you might not see the actual functional change until their kids mm-hmm. exist, right? It's like yeah. the change, the seed is sparked with that 10-year-old. They go out and they're the first generation to either get out of the hood or start to reinvest in the hood. Yes. And then their kids grow up in an environment that isn't dangerous, impoverished, yes. and without opportunity. Yes. And their kids are the 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 first generation of kids who grow up on a not on a, maybe a level playing field with everyone else. Yeah. So so maybe the transition takes a little while, but yeah, I mean, bro, you got to start it. I mean, it's really simple as that. And and and, and we keep having these conversations about uh, you know race in America, and race definitely plays a big role. But let's be clear, 80% of all Americans, all, black, white, whatever, are living paycheck to paycheck. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 80% of all Americans are living motherfucking paycheck to paycheck. So it's really about this money at the end of the goddamn day. Yeah. How are we going to get more people on a better financial footing in America? Yeah. Period. And yeah. I, I love the politicians. I love, you know, I, I think it was Mayor Pete who said, Mayor Pete said, if I you, you show me any poor and disenfranchised area. I'll show you, uh, or maybe, who was it? Maybe it was uh, Duke, Minnesota, the mayor of Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. He said, you show me any area that's fucked up, that's poor and disenfranchised, and I'll show you an area that we have not allocated enough resources, resources to. Resources to. Simple. <sighs> There's a... Uh, Melvin Carter. Melvin Carter. St. Paul, mayor of St. Pete said, not St. St. Pete, St. Paul. St. Paul, Minnesota, yeah. yeah. There's a... Um, and I'm curious for Chris's take on this. I, I was just thinking about something the other day, like just about like taxes and raising taxes. And you often hear like the democratic and like socialist agenda is to like increase the amount of, uh, that we tax people and then allocate those funds accordingly. And, um, usually I've been supportive of it. I've always voted democratic, but, um, I guess what I'm curious is like, why don't Democrats who believe that they should give more in taxes, why don't they just do that already by themselves? Like, there's no rule that says you can't pay more of your money in taxes. Like, be the change you want to see in the world. I don't know right? where it's going. But you wouldn't know where it's going regardless. Give it to charity. <laughs> well, that's what I say. It's like, give it yeah. to charity. But there's a lot of these Dems that are like, hey, we need to have a 60% tax rate or 55% tax rate or 70% tax rate. And it's like, I don't see you giving up 70% of your bread. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, if yeah, you yeah, believe yeah. it so fervently yeah. and you believe it's going to work, but you're not willing to do it, I get it. I'm suspicious. And maybe that's why I won't want to do it or because you won't want to no do it. There's no system in place to do it right now. Yeah, there is. I mean, it's called the like, government. Give the government money. So you're saying you fill out your income report and instead of I owe the feds $25,000, I'm just putting 50 down. Put 50. Pay, put the pay. Be the change you want to see in the world. Put your bread up, yo. You wouldn't do that. You would give it to some sort of charity or. You family. pay your 30, 40 percent, and then you. All right. So what do you think? Of Warren's that proposal. But that's to, what. But to, that's what rich people do, right? Is like they pay their 30, 40 percent, and then they do give tons of money to charity. You look at Bill Gates. You look at Warren Buffett. You yeah, look at all these people. Some rich people. Some people. A lot of rich people. people. I give to charity. The, the yeah. real rich people give to charity, right? So it's like it's not. So that thing does already happen. But what's curious to me is that these Democrats aren't willing to just cough up that money on their own. I mean, Bernie, well, hey, you, you don't, you Bernie, don't cough that. it up. Bernie made a milli last year. He didn't give up seven hundred grand. Yeah, they asked him that last night during the CNN town hall. They asked him, uh, "Is it is it hypocritical that he's asking the wealthy to do certain things, but now he's become one of the?" I'm okay with wealthy. you becoming wealthy. All yeah, I'm yeah. saying is now you you're wealthy. You better have given, and I fuck with Bernie. I voted for Bernie. Yeah. But now that you're wealthy, you better have coughed up 700 of that million. Because if you hell no, 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 it's not a. I mean, first of all, it sounds crazy to say someone making a million dollars is not particularly wealthy in America anymore. It's about the uber wealthy, the people making hundreds and billions of dollars, and it's also about the corporations and Amazon, people like this who literally pay no taxes. So if you look at her plans for housing or also the student debt, it's not about taxing somebody who makes a million, which in today's landscape is like basically. I mean, you're rich if you make a million, but you're like upper middle class. You you're know? rich if you're getting a million and you don't got to pay taxes on the motherfucker. Right. So it's talking about 
taxing the really, really, really rich to pay yeah. for this stuff. And I'm fine with that. And, I, and as someone who's like middle class or upper middle class, I'm fine with... Of course with, you're fine for it because not your money. A billion no, no, dollars. I, yeah, let me easy finish. Spend I said, I'm money. fine paying uh, more myself. I'm fine with you yeah. with my tax rates being raised. I think that's a more effective way to help the country than a trickle-down effect, which we know doesn't work. And yeah, that's uh, what the Republicans are Let me ask you this about. question, Sean, A multi-billion man. dollar company shouldn't be paying zero, zero. in taxes. That's zero. crazy. Well... No, that's I, crazy. I, I got to know Man. more about it just because if a multi-billion dollar company is able to achieve that status and employ all these t- all these people mm-hmm. and all these people that are employed are paying taxes, then in a way that company is providing the government with millions upon millions of taxable income, right? So it's not as simple as to go, oh, they're not paying taxes. It's like, yeah, but they're also paying tons of Americans to work. Yeah. And they're providing, and their money ends up going to taxes as well. Well, let me come up first, okay? That, but that's, like, like, uh, like, let me come up. Don't tax, don't tax me shit. <laughs> let I, me get zero dollars in taxes for a couple years. And see what you do. Yeah, let me stack this shit the right way. Son, that's why people start corporations. You got an LLC. I got you know a few I mean? of them. And you, you're not doing it because of the, you pay more in taxes with it. Uh, Uncle Sam, I pay all my taxes. I'm just saying. So yeah, it's like... Okay. Th- the systems are set up. It's just a it's just a crazy thing to think about. Like paying fifty five percent of taxes, right? That's Jesus. working January to July for free. Okay, but that was the income tax higher than that traditionally in America. Well, get the fuck out of here! I paid it. I'm not working over <laughs> half the year for free, Chris. Are you That's out of wild. your mind? But it's it's at a certain point. It's not half someone the year making. For free. They, they're already three. taking most of your money. Any goddamn. I, look, I. I pay a lot in taxes, and I pay all of it. As my dad once told me, don't fuck with Uncle Sam. You have no Korean loopholes? For Asian like, Americans <laughs> in the country? <laughs> Listen, the, the the point is not somebody making two, three, four million dollars. Like, for instance, I don't know if you guys saw, the, one of the, uh, like, not Walt Disney, but it's Roy Disney's great-granddaughter or something like that, yeah. recently spoke out about the fact that, I think the guy's name is Iger, who's now the head of Disney. Bob like, Iger. His bonus this year was something like, you know, $950 million. He okay. deserves it. He deserves it. And she's like, like, he's a slapped. really bright guy. He's brought an incredible amount of money into this company. But Infinity War you have slapped. a lot. Walt Disney has 200,000 employees. A lot of them are living check to check. At what point do we as a company say, pay him richly, reward him for moving this company in the right direction. But does he need 900 fucking million dollars? I'm not going to say what a man needs or not now. Because you got to think about... She was like, she was sorry, sir, broke it It's not down. about need. It's about deserve. No, yes. these are different things. Last LeBron, year was a huge year for Disney, Okay, Chris. LeBron like James was, deserves $1 billion a year from a team. There's a bullshit salary cap that doesn't allow him to get paid what he is worth to a franchise. He don't deserve a billion, not this year. Not this year, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about literally what he does for like when he went to Cleveland, what he did for the real estate economy within Cleveland, what he did for businesses in Cleveland. They I would marketed have, it. You know they, what's so funny about that? I said when he went back, I said if I was LeBron, there's no way I'm not going back unless they make me part owner of this team. Boom. Because you understand your value, yeah, right? Yeah, you understand yeah. truly what you bring, right? That guy, Bob Iger, or whatever his name is, yeah. right? His value to that company was actually more than $950 million because a company never pays you more than you're worth. They got a profit on you. So his true value to that company is probably $2 billion, but the company got to make some money too so they settle at nine hundred fifty. Disney had two movies last year that did like Black Panther did over a billion and Infinity War did like two billion. Or something. Every, Every well, movie is doing a billion, bro. Is, you know... Her point was, how much could we have redistributed that money Listen, within the company? Well, this guess is the what, Chris? Everybody trying deserve- to buy a loudspeaker feels the same way about you right now. They're like, you know what? I'm glad you feel that way. Million. I'm glad you feel that way about all this money, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad you, I'm glad you feel that yeah, way. Yeah, you don't need anything, Would Chris? you take 900 million for loudspeaker? Yeah, but I wouldn't. I would be. Everybody turn into a Flintstone once they get offered some money, right? I don't think that's a choice I'm going to have to make, but because you you compare need and deserve, you got to pay people what they deserve because this is what happens if you don't pay Bob Iger. Let me finish. No one else could have. Let me just finish. If you don't pay Bob Iger 950 million, right? Bob Iger goes to a different company where he's going to get this nine hundred fifty million, right? Right. And that company ends up making Black Panther. That company ends up buying Fox and then uniting the the uniting the companies and starting their own streaming service and really tra- changing the transition and protecting the brand of Disney as it goes in the future. And to answer Chris's question, um, I, I really don't even know what Bob Iger fucking does, to be honest with you. But 
What if he's the person who greenlit Black Panther? What if he's Good the call. person that said, hey, black director, Good black call. writers, Smart all black call. cast, we're going to spend a lot of money on this shit? Like, nobody would think to do a Black Panther movie. You know what I'm saying? By the way, I mean, Marvel had their plan years and years but ago. The, but the just the fact is, that you greenlit it, gave how, it a budget, and made it happen. How stronger would the organization, because everyone's contributing to an organization like Disney, right? Clearly they working good. Clearly it's functioning fine. Bro, Disney yeah. is about to have the biggest streaming service out. Right. So like everything did, they're doing but, is working. But suppose you paid him a $300 million bonus and the people making 60 grand a year with so so benefits, you're saying. I get got it. 120. I get it. How did, I get her it. point was like, so he gets three guess, less I get yachts, it. five less luxury homes. I get what you're He's saying. still living the best fucking life possible. Spread the wealth is what you're saying. At 400. That's it. Yo, not saying don't let this guy get paid. What well, you're saying is 100% reasonable. He's getting paid. Yo, yo what you're Lovely. saying you're, what you're saying is 100% right. reasonable. It is 100% reasonable. And it is what we all perceive as the morally right thing to do so you can help more people. Absolutely. Right. 100%. All I'm saying is, when it becomes time for someone to get paid, everybody wants what they deserve. Like, no athlete needs $30 million to deal. Stephen Curry doesn't need $30 Russell million. Russell Wilson don't need $140 Russell million. Need, doesn't they don't need, need that's fine. If that's the income they're bringing, I'm fine. What I don't like using what the I'm NBA saying is, is... Real quick, real quick. Yeah. Just, we got to... Uh, right now, what we're doing is we're deciding how much someone else needs, right? right? And that's an unfair discussion because nobody needs more than a hundred grand. Nobody needs more than fifty grand, right? right? Nobody needs more than thirty grand. Nobody like Bullshit. we can keep on dropping it down. My nanny car costs twenty. Your what? My nanny's car. I thought you said picking any again. I was like, what the hell, <laughs> bro? Come on, man! Stop listening to Kate Smith. They're still bro. selling picking <laughs> You could go buy picking it. How but much my, does a 2019 picking any go for? <laughs> my God. Does okay. LeBron generates X amount for Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. it's great. And obviously, owners are only going to play pay these players what they're actually bringing in in revenue. My question is, do the taxpayers in Cleveland have to give Quicken Loans a free pass uh, in Brooklyn? You know how much real estate is worth in downtown Brooklyn now? Yeah. The fact that these guys basically just got a tax break on the entire thing? Yeah. Fuck that. It's bullshit, that, dude. That's, I agree with you. I think that's, that's bullshit. That's when people got to wake up and be like, but, but you're we talking, don't need to yeah. underwrite these fucking stadiums. So you're talking yeah. about, yeah, just to clarify, you're talking about when the taxpayers end up paying for arenas and stadiums. And I agree with you. I think it's total bullshit. It's like, yeah, right. especially if I can't even afford tickets to the fucking game. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, why, why are we paying yeah. for the stadiums? I, it's I agree. fucking insane. 100%. Yeah. I think that's just different than like, I think that's a perfect example for what we're talking about. It's like, you don't need the taxpayers to pay for the stadium. You're a rich guy. You could pay for yourself. Bruce Ratner, Bruce Ratner didn't need a fucking tax break so, now what if the stadium's hiring mad people from the community and that's how they sold it that's, okay and that's how they always sell it okay. and that's like, how they sell it's it that's, a, the community. that's nickel and dime shit that's these just rich guys, people keeping their money these guys walked away with so much money and they buy out the politicians they bought out the city council people in brooklyn they bought out a lot of local organizers and mm -hmm. they're long gone bruce ratner's long gone he sold that shit years ago he made all sorts of promises he didn't keep them Hey, if you want to start a sports franchise and you need a seven hundred million dollar facility to keep yourself competitive and make the locker room nice enough for elite players come, you need seven hundred million dollars to me. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, city yeah. shouldn't have, and you know they just tried that shit in Phoenix where they basically, you know, acted like they were going to leave the city and the, the city caved. You don't need a fucking basketball team. You don't. You don't All right, you say that shit. No, you don't. You no. might have needed one thirty years ago when the only way to see an NBA game was to fucking go in person or have a local network. But you know, I every mean, game's on your phone. You say that you don't need a team, but I mean, these teams generate so much revenue for the city. How much do you think the Phoenix Suns really generate for a Phoenix? A lot. Why? What People. is Phoenix? What is Phoenix without that basketball team? Golf courses. Who goes? Fake titties. Fake. University of you Phoenix. Know what I'm Who the fuck? When have you ever met someone who's like, yo, I gotta get to Phoenix to see a Suns game? Back in the day, bro, Phoenix Suns used to slap yeah. Barkley, Kevin Johnson. Not gonna lie, they Phoenix actually, they actually back economy. popping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phoenix is a popping economy, though. Real estate big out there, and there's a lot of cool opportunities going out out there. I think there's a lot of tech moving into Phoenix. It doesn't matter. Point is, and it gives the city an identity. Yo, listen. Put that money into schools, man. I get what he's saying. What he's saying is, if you're a billionaire and you're coming in to and you own this team. You can put the money up. Yeah, yeah. Build yeah, your yeah. arena. You want a new arena? Build it. Improve yeah. it. You're a billionaire. Take out the loans. You can do this shit. Why you we don't have to. We don't have to I'm pay with your you. basic costs for I'm it. With you. It's insane. I'm, I'm, not, I'm with you. I'm, yeah. See that 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 makes such that makes a lot of logical sense. And then if you're the owner, when and you have the whole fan base upset that you're losing, you could just be like, "Well, fuck y'all. Y'all ain't put any money into this shit. Word up. It's my money. I, I put all the bread up. Word up. I'm assigning where the fuck I want.
Well, they still say fuck you. They get a tax break. It's not like they set aside X amount of seats at Barclays Center for the neighborhood. What if tax breaks are based on uh, how they win or lose? Boom. So the Knicks owe a lot of money in taxes right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> the Knicks owe a lot of goddamn. James Dolan owes a lot in fucking taxes right Give now. Give me bro. my money, yo. Let's pay some bills, man. I gotta pee. Guys. We on calm. I know. Stress is a worldwide epidemic, okay? We're working longer hours. We're inundated with the constant news cycle, and we're more connected than ever before. Stress is a part of life, and it can easily affect our overall health and well-being. That's why we're partnering with Calm, the number one app to help you reduce your anxiety and stress and help you sleep better. More than 40 million people around the world have downloaded it. If you head to Calm.com, I like that, Calm.com slash idiots, you'll get 25% off a Calm premium subscription, which includes guided meditations on issues like anxiety, stress, and focus, including a brand new meditation each day. I've been, I've been using this. Have you been? It helps. I've been having trouble sleeping, so this is a way just to kind oh, of- Oh, I love, the, I love yeah. the sleep stories. I love the little meditation before sleep, because sometimes my brain is going crazy, and there's something to focus me, get my breath right, and then boom, I'm out. Yep. That's what the sleep stories are. They're these bedtime stories for adults designed to help you relax, okay? They just get you concentrating on one thing, breathing regularly. You're not tossing and turning, and you get yourself ready for a nice bedtime. So you're not just looking at your phone, calculating how little sleep you're about to get before you got to wake up in the morning. That's what I constantly do. Head to the magical lavender fields of southern France with Stephen Fry or explore the moonlit jungles of Africa with Leona Lewis. They also have soothing music and more. Right now, Brilliant Idiots listeners get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash idiots. That's C-A-L-M dot com slash idiots. Get unlimited access to all of Calm's content today at calm.com slash idiots. Get calm. Stop stressing. Let's, let's run through some hot topics real quick. All right, what you got for me, man? Um, Kid Cudi dropped $10,000 on Popeyes to feed the homeless before Coachella. $10,000 worth of Popeyes chicken, right? Uh, biscuits, mashed potatoes, and fries to provide to the Coachella Valley Rescue Mission. Um, well, first of all, I wish it was a more healthier option, even, though I, lo- even though I love Popeyes, you know what I'm saying? But you already got these guys and women who are malnourished, probably, you know what I'm saying? Haven't had a good, healthy meal in a while. It would have been much more flyer to see, like, some vegan meal or just something a little bit more healthy. A tomato, a vegetable, a, some lettuce. Yes. Something. Keep these people alive. Not to mention, I heard no mention of drinks. So Popeyes, you're just going to have them doing Popeyes with no beverages. Popeyes biscuits will kill you if you don't have a drink. Damn. Try eating a Popeyes biscuit with no beverage to wash it the fuck down. Bro. Okay? So before we applaud Kid Cudi about this, let's make sure these homeless people are still alive. He's giving them diabetes, man. This is fucked up. That's, okay. Um, uh, oh, this is good. Nicolas Cage. Mm. Uh, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> One of the most underrated actors in history. I'm a massive mm. Nick Cage fan. Mm. Massive Nick Cage fan. I got Go some on. Nick Cage shit that slaps. What was that one movie he was in that slap? No, I'm not going in 60 seconds. No, I'm thinking of Keanu Reeves. Never mind. Uh, but, the Rock, the shit where he escapes from the prison in the water. That was. Oh no, that was good. Son. Josh Volta was in there, right? No, Face Off. Classic. Another one. Classic. Yo, I'm telling you, Nick classic. Cage is mad underrated, bro. He's Face Off is a classic. Go. What do we got? He was married for four days. And uh, his wife got a divorce, and now she's seeking spousal support. <laughs> yes. Yes. Son. He was married for four days to Erica Koike, or whatever her name is. Son. And now she's seeking spousal support after four days nah, 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 of marriage. Nah, Nicholas states he was drunk and that he reacted on impulse and without the ability to recognize or understand the full impact of his actions. And uh, he says that the marriage is fraudulent. He fired for an annulment last month after just four days. They got married in Vegas. My God, you fucking rookie. The How old are you, Nick? What the fuck, man? Who does that? That's like some old school shit, bro. You get fucking drunk and married in Vegas? I thought that shit only happens in movies. Yeah, dude. No, this is absurd. Do you think she is old anything? Are you kidding me? You can pay her for the four days. Uh, all right, fine. Pay for the four I'll days. pay you for the four days. Pay for the four days. Four days. Based off his income and whatever he's making, or even his net worth, and four days of that. Even then, it's so absurd. These fucking money grubbing whores, man. I don't know who to be mad at in this situation. Are, Why? You, are you mad at the woman? Are you mad at Nicholas for getting fucking drunk and marrying her? Oh, he's an idiot. But yeah. at the same time, to be such a money grubbing, gold digging whore yeah, that yeah, you yeah, think yeah. you deserve money, spousal support after being married for four days, 
This is disgusting. He you probably broke her, her heart though. He probably jail. took her to like a, a, a like an emotional roller coaster. Like she probably was like, "Oh my God, I'm married Nicholas to Nick Cage. Cage. I'm in love. Oh, he swept me off my feet. He told me he wanted to marry me. We got married, and then four days later, the hangover wears off, the fucking drugs wear off, the alcohol, whatever the fuck. And now you're looking at her like, "What the fuck did I just do, bro? Let's let's keep it real. You say what? What if she quit her job? Who gives a fuck? What did That's you say, you? Alex? What if she quit her job? What if she quit? Oh, no, that's, she's just stupid. Nobody told her to quit her fucking ass. job. Quit her job. Uh, yeah, we admit he's stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, could yeah. both be stupid. How old is Nicolas Cage? Because this girl is only 35. Nah, Nicolas Cage is up there. Listen, let's let's be honest about what's happened. This girl's pussy's trash. And he found out after the wedding mm. when they fucked for the first time mm. and he realized, I cannot be with this trash-ass pussy for the rest of my life. I'm getting this shit clipped. Four days of trash pussy make you feel like a lifetime will be the worst decision you've How ever made. How old is he? 55, so, oh my God. So this girl is 20 years younger than him, yeah. Now, I don't know if the pussy's trash, but I do think he got drunk as shit. He was trying to relive his old wild out days. Mm -hmm. He's in Vegas. Mm -hmm. This older, this young woman is like, I don't even like, I've never even seen Face Off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't watch this type of shit. And she's not impressed. And the only way for him to get those, get that, get them draws is to lie and say, I want to marry you. So he marries her. He gets the draws. Yeah. And, and then he realizes, my God, it's too difficult to fuck nowadays. I should have just bought a prostitute. So much easier. This is by you in Vegas, You're bro. You're in Vegas. Just do it. It's a easier function. Yeah. I, I can't believe anybody would do it any other way. All right, uh, Howard University. Oh um, yeah, I saw this. There's a guy. What's the guy's name? Shit, we don't have a guy's name. It's this guy. He looks like gay Dan Bilzerian. <laughs> he's, he's upset because uh, they. He, the, the, the Howard University has this place called the Yard. Yes, most most universities have a yard, but yeah, Howard like is green historically section. known yeah. as the Yard. Yeah. and this guy wants to walk his dog on Howard's yard. Right, and um, when they told him he couldn't, he really got upset, and he said, "Well, why don't they just move to school? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just relocate the whole goddamn campus. Why don't you?" Yeah, I think okay? his I think his statement was like, "Listen, this is a community. We all have to live here and live together. And if you don't want to be part of the community, then you yeah. can go somewhere else with the school." Now, remember when we talked about you? Talked talked about uh living in a certain time yes and you know you 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 do things that are even worse than the time he's speeding we know white privilege exists yes. we know entitlement exists yes this is something else when you say i can't wait till you see my i can't wait till you see my white privilege bit man i got a good when one coming. Say, oh it's good bro when you say yeah. i want this whole fucking school to move yeah, yeah that's yeah. been here for 152 years yeah but i want this whole school to move so i can walk my fucking dog your dog that's gonna die in five years bro that's a, even people with privilege gotta be like come on the fuck up no no it's absurd you're doing too much bro yeah he, he's doing too much and another time it's like don't shit on my fucking lawn if i'm a kid spending forty thousand yeah. dollars to go to school every single year and i'm trying to relax on the lawn in between classes and I'm sitting in Chihuahua shit, yeah. I'd be pretty fucking pissed off too. Take your dog and have it shit on the street like everyone else's dog shits in the street. The audacity that you could walk on the yeah. lawn of someone else's property yeah. and take a shit. If my neighbor's dog shit on my lawn, yeah. I'm eating your dog. Bro, how about this? I mean, how is university? Dog. Why are people who don't work at the school are people who go to the school allowed to walk on the fucking yard? That's a lot of really? That is. Well, Howard, I want you to listen to it these is. three words from a very wise man. Yeah. Build the wall. <laughs> All right. Put a fucking put a fucking black brick wall around that goddamn campus so people who don't go there or people who don't work there can't just walk across this motherfucker. All right? Either that or hire fruit of Islam security. <laughs> All right? Or get a fucking Malcolm X Lewis Farrakhan scarecrow. Do something to scare white people people from walking on this goddamn lawn like y'all making these people feel too comfortable they shouldn't feel that comfortable walking across the fucking lawn i think the issue was the dog shitting yeah. i think that was the big issue and okay i think that's i think it's reasonable like don't have your dog shit and pee where people are going to relax and, and sit down yeah, that's what the campus. lawn is about right unless you let the kids on campus have dogs no, they can have dogs too. But even if the kids on campus had really? dogs and the dogs were shitting, like let's say you just live in the neighborhood, you have yeah, an apartment, yeah. and you're you gotta walking. clean up after yourself. So clean up after your fucking dog. But I these people, they have a dog, and the shit is biodegradable, yeah. so they think it can just shit anywhere. I'm paying forty thousand dollars a year. I don't know if that's Howard, insulting. I don't know if Howard allows pets, but if they do, 
I need y'all to be stereotypical black students and get a bunch of pit bulls. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Howard students is buying pit bulls now <laughs> and let them pit bulls eat them little shih tzus Son, when they're walking across that goddamn campus. Just fight the pit bulls on the yard. <laughs> okay? These white people won't go anywhere near that yard. You just do a pit bull fight ring right on the yard. Okay? Have the 21 Savage blasting. That's it. 21 right. in the back. That's it. Pit bulls fighting. That gay dude with the beard is going to walk up That's like, it. oh no. That's it. Oh no. Getting the fuck on. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening here? Okay. <laughs> what would Mr. Howard think about this? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Who the fuck is Mr. Howard? <laughs> Howard University, I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted my dog to take a shit on this lawn. I didn't realize I was going to wa watch animal violence. Why? <laughs> this is animal violence. <laughs> why? YNW Melly is facing the death penalty in a murder case. To be honest with you, I didn't even know who YNW Melly was until he killed his friends. That's not funny. I just didn't. Yo, I really didn't know who he was until he killed his friends. You don't listen to YNW Melly? No. <laughs> what? You listen to YNW Melly? That's my favorite rapper. No. When I'm walking my dog on Howard's campus and just taking shots everywhere, I listen to YNW Melly. YNW Melly. Oh, yeah. No. That's what gives you the confidence to just take a big shit on a black, yes. black college campus. That's what the white person would say when he gets scared. As soon as you see the black guys coming towards him, yo, man, I listen to YNW Melly. <laughs> Guys, what are you bopping to today? <laughs> what are you bopping? <laughs> Guys? Guys, what are you bopping to you today? Bopping to? I was just listening to Kate Smith. I mean, YNW Melly. That's what I was listening to. Not Kate Smith at all. What are you even talking about? <laughs> Guys, whatever. Oh, man. Let's do uh, some asking idiot. <laughs> uh, do we pay? What? What was we talking about? Oh, all right. Well, before we, before we do ask an idiot, I just want to let y'all know that when I was young, man, I paid credit card companies a fortune in interest because I didn't have a credit history. Now I'm older. I built some credit, but I'm still getting dinged, you know, them annual fees, the foreign transaction fees. But have you ever heard of a credit card company that actually helps you avoid paying those fees and unexpected interest charges? Well, I just did, and it completely changed the way I think about credit cards. So the new company is called Petal. Pedal uses advanced technology and partners with WebBank member FDIC to provide access to a Visa credit card along with a simple modern mobile app experience designed to help you build credit. You can qualify even if you've never had credit in the past, but make no mistake, Pedal is great for anybody looking for more from their credit card company. When Pedal says no fees, they mean it. Even if you miss a payment, no annual fees, no foreign transaction fees, or any other kind of fees. APRs, Pedal suggests you will Avoid interest charges entirely by paying in full each month. They also let you automate your payments on their mobile app. So you never miss one. As of today, their variable APRs range from 15.24% to 26.24%. If you want to build your credit the right way, check out the Pedal Credit Card. It's a smarter credit card for the modern world. Go to pedalcard.com slash idiots today to find out more. That's P-E-T-A-L. That's pedal with a T. P-E-T-A-L, car.com slash idiots. All right, let's do some asking idiots. I could tell Taylor sent some of these in herself. Um, because one? one of the Twitter names has no face and it says at pothole seven nine nine four four Philly. Oh my lord! Now, pothole man. Now, uh, would you rather lose your sex organs forever? Okay, or gain two hundred pounds for the rest of your life? Woo! Two hundred pounds for the rest of my life. Sex organs forever? No, I'd probably want to be fatter for the rest of your life. I mean, lose your sex organs for how long? Bro, 200, you over 300. I know, 200, but how long? Forever. Lose sex organs forever. Or gain 200 pounds for the rest of your life. Yeah, I'd rather be fat with a dick than skinny with no dick. But What's then the you'd point have to, of being skinny? But then you'd have to be really successful in order to get pussy and stuff. Yeah, it pushed me even harder. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And all yeah. the easy fat jokes I can make. You oh couldn't do stand-up the same at 300 pounds, I though. do sit down. <laughs> a different game out there. Now, now would you rather? What would have, you do? I'm not even. I don't, listen, I'm be honest with you. I'm not even inviting these negative spirits in my life. <laughs> I don't even know why Taylor asked this fucking crazy. I'm not doing that. I want my sex organs, and I don't want to be 200 pounds. Uh, would you rather have sex with your cousin in secret, or not have sex with your cousin, but everyone would think you did? Cousin in secret. <laughs> So if you're gonna have the if you're gonna have the rumor on you that you fucked your cousin, Hell yeah. you want to get the nut. 
Facts. Okay, 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 okay. I'm just saying, I don't want people... No, 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 because this one says, if I, I fuck my cousin, nobody knows. No, it said, would you rather have sex with your cousin in secret yeah. or not have sex with your cousin but everyone, but everyone think thinks you did? You did. Yeah, so yeah, I'd rather yeah, yeah. do it and nobody knows than not do it and everybody think. Yeah. I'd rather not have sex with my cousin but everybody thinks I did. And the only reason I say that <laughs> is because Wildin'. I don't care what people think as long as I know it's not true. So if I know I didn't fuck my cousin, it wouldn't bother me to have a bunch of people saying, cousin fucker, cousin fucker. You know what I'm saying? Nah, bro. That shit would bother me, B. Nah, it wouldn't bother me. <laughs> 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 All right. Rob at Rave0017 says, where do you see the podcast game going in five years? I don't know if I want to give away all the jewels, bro. Okay, okay. I don't know. I don't know if I want to give away all the jewelry. I, don't know um, wanna... I think it's going to continue to grow. Oh, without a doubt. I think it's going to continue to grow because I think that people love content, and I think if it's one thing that we learned from radio and still do learn from radio, you know, we'll never get tired of hearing people's opinions and people's POVs. It's just going to be more people from different walks of life sharing their experiences. Uh, for a lot of people, podcasts are like safaris. You know what I'm saying? So they get to get in this motherfucking safari jeep and ride through the motherfucking jungle and, and see what's going on in other people's worlds and not have to be there. So I just think, I don't, I don't I don't see podcasts going anywhere. I think that podcasts are only going to grow bigger, especially with all of these companies that are devoting themselves just to podcasts and all of these companies that are buying up podcasts and promoting them and marketing them. Like, I see Luminary shit every fucking where. Mm -hmm. Like, they spent a lot of money in promotions and marketing and, you know, stuff like that helps the whole podcast game yes. as a whole. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when you see what Joe Budden is doing with Spotify, that helps the whole podcast game as a whole. When you see what Joe Rogan's doing with his platform, like, Joe Rogan is not just a podcast you go to, it's a platform. You yes. know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, even the Pod Save America guys, or, you know, Two Dope Queens, like, any of these people that are taking podcasts to the next level, whether they're turning their podcasts to TV shows, or their podcasts are destination spots for people, or, you know, companies like Luminary signing podcasts, promoting and marketing the fuck out of them, you know it's gonna be huge iHeart did his first ever podcast awards last year mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like so it's 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 a thing it's not going nowhere it's only gonna get bigger and better yeah. but I do think uh, the cream is gonna rise to the crop the top 100% and a lot of the bullshit is gonna end up getting phased out cause some of y'all on podcasts and people don't even want to hear the fuck hear you talk at your house. So why would the fuck would we want to hear yeah. you in real life? I think a hundred percent. I I think I think for the next five years, I think this will be the trajectory. Right now, big companies are getting involved. They're buying out podcasts. Um, most of that will fail. Uh, a couple of them will succeed, and it will be trending similar to music, where it will there'll be like a big glory day for music. But it's less authentic because the big companies are involved and they're mm -hmm. telling you what to do as much and you're not getting the free form, free conversation, raw authenticity that you get from the indie ones. Uh, the podcast will get really big and then people will find that they're not that authentic and all of a sudden this indie scene will come back up and explode again. Yeah. And that will be like the SoundCloud rapper. That's a great point. The companies yeah. that are going to win are the companies that sign these podcasts but let the podcast be themselves be themselves and stay their own independent entities because the companies that are going to win are the companies that are like you know what we already see what Brilliant Idiots is doing mm -hmm. we'd rather get some than nothing you know what I'm saying the, the, the companies that are signing these podcasts and they're saying we want it all mm. meaning like you gotta pay to even listen to it that I don't think those models are going to succeed but Damn. the companies that are signing people and saying, hey, y'all are on our platform, but y'all can still stay on SoundCloud, still stay on YouTube. We just want to be in business with y'all. They, they're going to succeed. They're going to win. Salute because to heart. They're just getting a piece and they're getting, real talk. That's the heart model. The yeah. talk, they're getting a piece, they're supporting what's happening, Yes. and they're supporting the authenticity in its natural stage. I already see it happen with, with certain podcasts that, you know, went to certain, you know, paid platforms. All of a sudden, their guests are all curated by the platform. Mm. Now, if the guests are curated by the platform, those mm. aren't the authentic conversations that those people hosting a podcast want to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now yeah, yeah. you are just a vehicle of the platform. So now we're losing that authenticity, yeah. right? The thing that we love so much about it. So the people, again, just like you said, if you're smart in this game and you got money, you just go, how can I help you scale up? 
Yeah, like yeah, if yeah. I had if I had billions of dollars, right? I'd just go to the the, the podcast that I loved, and I go, "Hey, I think you guys are the future. What do you need to be bigger? Yeah, yeah. just what what do you need? And most, I don't, of the, most of the time, it's just promotion and marketing. That's it. You you it's a promotion market. Yeah. You want better cameras? Do you want a better studio? What what do you need? I'll yeah. give you that money, and then you and I let's work out a percentage that works for me and everything that comes with it. But I want you guys to do do you, and I want to be silent. I wouldn't even take credit. I'd be like, be let me be a silent investor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. knows who owns what percentage of Amazon. You know what I mean? Like some people own Amazon stock, but no one fucking knows exactly who. Yeah. Just give them the money, let it grow, and then you reap some of it. But these big brands are involved. And remember, once you got a daddy, a daddy can tell you what to do. That's right. So. All right, this is the last question. Uh, Marcus at WS underscore at WSGT says, y'all ever thought about writing a movie together? Hashtag ask hmm. an idiot. Tell them about that movie you wanted to make. Yeah, I mean, I, I, listen, I always got movie ideas. And, you know, when I think about ideas I got from movies, especially comedies, like I want to showcase the people that I think are extremely funny. The Andrew Schultz's, the Little Duvals, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, those are my folks, but they're actually super funny. And I, 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 I'm I, always coming up with ideas for films and stuff like that, but I, I really got inspired the other day when I watched our guy, Pete Davidson's movie, Big Time Adolescence. Oh, I didn't see it. It's not out. Okay. It's not out. Uh, I was I was I was with Pete this weekend and Pete got one, bro. Really? Yeah, he got. You know why he got one, man? And it's 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 and and I thought about this, right? It's it's tone. I love movies with a certain tone. I love movies with a certain pacing. I yeah. love Super Bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because even though Super Bad is a comedy, it's got a certain pace and it's a story behind it. It's a message in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love Get Him to the Greek. I love old movies like Kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love Project X. Like, all of these movies have a certain tone to them. Coming to age films. Coming to age That's films. That's what you're describing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you know why Atlanta works? Because Donald Glover, Childish Gambino, has that tone. Yeah, he's coming to age. He's finding himself. People. He's finding his humanity. He's finding yes. his adulthood. He's finding what he yes. is. Yeah. So even if you're black or white, it's an underlying theme in that. Whether you know about hip-hop or not, it's an underlying theme in that that you can relate to, yeah. that you can connect with. And that's what Pete has with Big Time Adolescence. Nice like it's, a, it's a coming of age film for, yeah. for for both parties. You know what I'm saying? For both stars of the movie. And Who is I, he, Who's in it with him? Uh, I mean, I, the only person I know is Machine Gun Kelly. I'm sure that there's some other white people that are popping that you probably look at. Like, oh, that's such a... I'm like, I don't... I don't right, right, know, right, I, right. But Machine Gun Kelly's in it. And Jordan Rock. Jordan Rock. Is oh, in shout it. out to Jordan. Yeah, Jordan. It. But it's, it's just a, it's just a, it's a good movie. And I saw that, and I was like, yeah, we got to get one, bro. We got it. We got it. We got to get one, one. But I want, I got to, I want to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Creative control. Even if I fund it myself, like you just got to get the right writers, and it got to have just that right tone, that right pacing, and like big time adolescence falls in that same vein of those movies that I that I just named. It just got that tone, and it's just you got know that what pacing. we need. We need a, because we're not coming to age. We're above, we're older than that generation. Mm -hmm. Do you know what we need? We need whatever our version of Ocean's Eleven is. Yeah. We need that rap pack yeah. feeling where it's like, I love the, as I get older, I love the, let's get the gang back together because we're the, because only we can solve this problem. Yeah. That's yeah, what, yeah. what, Infinity War is like that's what a lot of yeah, these Marvel yeah, movies yeah, is yeah, like yeah. only all of us together with yeah. our unique skill sets can solve this problem now sometimes that problem is comedic sometimes a superhero but I think that we could cook up our version of that throwback Rat Pack Ocean's Eleven yeah. vibe where the year is 2039 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we're fucking 50 plus 60 years old out this motherfucker. Duval right. is still touring off Smile, bitch. Still touring off Smile. Got a Vegas residency <laughs> off one goddamn song. All right? Smile, bitch. All right? And the residency has been going on so long. When he does pull up, they're like, get the smile, bitch, please. All right? All right? But yes, that, 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 we can, listen. Yes, we got some things cooking, man. That's all I can tell you. But, all right, I'm done here. I got meetings and shit to do. Perfect, man. Uh, as Thank always, you. if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.